ओके गुड डे ऑडियंस कैन यू हेयर मी प्लीज सो दैट वी कैन स्टार्ट आवर सेशन फॉर्मली ओके टुडे इज द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ आवर प्रैक्टिस टू पास सेशन ऑफ एफ सेवन राइट ओके द ऑब्जेक्टिव of this session is to revise things which you have studied uh please don't expect that we'll do each and everything but we'll try to complete we'll try to cover major important areas right okay now let me introduce myself my name is mustafa ahmed mirchawala uh i'm the ceo of mirchawala hub of accountancy institute of acci icw cfa and all these qualifications right uh i've been teaching for last almost 16 to 17 years my major papers are uh f3 f7 f6 SBR and corporate reporting of ICW that final paper, right? Okay. Uh, I'm also a vlogger. I have some time I makes development videos for students as well. And our students are our institutes offer everything, all 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 complete ACCA courses, right? Okay. Now, and Alhamdulillah, recently my students got three positions, two in Saudi Arab. in one f6 saudi atop the second is sbr saudi atop and the third one pakistan pakistan nation wide position in f6 right okay so let's start and today's our today's of day's objective is consolidation today we are going to cover consolidation right okay so what's the strategy first of all uh, first one hour or one and a half hour i'll be giving you some recap of consolidation what you have studied in the class and then we'll shift to the question and obviously we'll be doing questions on excel or software right now first of all we know can you see the screen we all know this is very basic when when one company acquires 50% plus 50% plus ordinary shares of another company when one company acquires 50% plus ordinary shares of other company that company gets the control of that company right okay now this control means parent company is buying running business always always think like that that parent company is buying running business of subsidiary company right okay now first of all we are doing the sofp thing sofp thing in consolidated sofp question what's the first step the first step is you have to make net assets packet you have to pay make net assets packet uh you can see on the screen uh, there is one date this is 1st of january this is 1st of january 2016 and the second date is 31st december 2017 this date is, is acquisition date this date is acquisition date acquisition date means the date on which parent company acquires subsidiary company parent company acquires subsidiary company so first of all first of all my dear students first of all you need to make net assets packet of s company net assets packet of s company right okay look at here so for example you have a share capital at the acquisition date of s company of 10000 share premium 5000 retain earning 10000 these things are normally normally ready made given in the question right so you will just copy paste it that's it now this is reporting date the reporting date is the date on which you have to prepare sofp reporting date is the date on which you have to prepare sofp right so at the sofp date at the sofp date you you have share capital of 10000 share premium of 5000 and the retain earning number is 30000 now look at look look at the screen and think over it you know that even in your basic papers you have studied about this that this is the scope of our course that once parent company has taken over once parent company has taken over s company from that date s company won't won't issue any new shares from that date s company won't issue any new shares right that means there in your course never never ever there will be no change in share capital and share premium no no change in share capital and share premium of s company after the takeover date yes but retain earning may be changed retain earning will be changed retain earning will be changed okay so now acquisition date net asset packet is 25000 and reporting date net asset packet is 45000 and the difference between these two packet is your s company's post retain earning this is called s company's post retain earning or s company's post net assets okay now what we do there are two methods of consolidation you have studied this in your with 
with your teachers that there are two methods of consolidation now after 2008 after 2008 first method is proportionate method first method is proportionate method what do, what do you mean by proportionate method for example parent company is acquiring 80% shares of s company parent company has just acquired 80% shares of s company so now if we are using proportionate method then we'll calculate proportionate goodwill means we'll only calculate 80% goodwill we will we will only calculate 80% goodwill now what's the formula of goodwill see look at the screen look i just enlarged it cost of investment cost of investment means whatever parent company price parent company has paid cost of investment less fair value of net assets of s company now which date now the question is which date do we compute goodwill we always 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 compute goodwill at acquisition date we always always compute goodwill at acquisition date that's why we always use acquisition date net asset packet in the computation of goodwill look at here so now cost of investment obviously we have acquired 80% shares of s company so this cost of investment is equal to 80% so definitely we have to multiply the net assets the net assets of s company we have to multiply the net assets of s company with 80% so now just think this coi is also 80% my dear student this coi is also 80% this net asset packet is also 80% so obviously the goodwill is also 80% this goodwill is this goodwill is 80% okay so this is the first characteristic of proportionate method that whatever whatever percentage holding you have you will compute goodwill to that extent only you will compute goodwill to that extent only okay then second thing how to calculate nci nci means minority shareholders minority shareholders we are controlling party the other party is non controlling party right now in this proportionate method open your eyes in this proportionate method you will compute nci proportionately what do you mean by proportionately means means s company's net assets multiplied by the nci holding percentage very simple formula s company's net asset multiplied by nci holding percentage now in right now in on the screen i have used a detail method there is a shortcut for this as well what i did first i took c first i took s company's acquisition date net assets c first i took s company's acquisition date net, net asset multiplied by 20% and then i added then i added this s company's post retain earning then i added this s company's post retain earning then i added this s company's post retain earnings share of s company in this so automatically this is nci at reporting date automatically we get nci at reporting date but we have a shortcut as well for this we have a shortcut for this as well so what is the shortcut you can directly do you can directly pick up this packet look at here you can directly pick up s company's reporting date net assets packet and just multiply it by 20% just multiply just multiply it by 20% okay now the third thing is consolidated reserve consolidated re reserve means group retain earning consolidated reserve means group retain earning what are normally the major components of consolidated reserve definitely parent companies complete retain earning at the reporting date parent companies complete complete reporting uh, complete retain earning at reporting date plus 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 s companies plus s companies post retain earnings times your holding percentage plus s companies look at the screen plus s companies post retain earning times 80% that means that means s companies post net assets s companies post retain earning goes to at two places 80% in consolidated reserve and 20% in nci because right now i have assumed i have assumed the holding 8020 right now i have assumed the holding 8020 i have assumed the holding 8020 right so look at here this is what your proportionate method is this is what your proportionate method is goodwill only goodwill is calculated up to the up to your holding percentage extent means if you have 80% holding then goodwill is only computed till 80% that's it nci in proportionate method nci how we compute nci come on come on come on speak how we compute nci in proportionate method s company's net assets packet simply simple formula s company's net assets multiplied by nci holding percentage s company's net assets multiplied by nci holding percentage s company's net assets 
मल्टीप्लाई बाय एनसीआई होल्डिंग परसेंटेज ओके नाउ देर इज वन मोर मैथड विच वी कॉल एंड दैट्स वेरी फेमस मैथड इवन इवन इन एफ थ्री इन एफ थ्री you there is only one this method is only examinable in f3 paper but in f7 we have two two methods so this method is full goodwill method what's the special thing about full goodwill method the special thing about full goodwill method is we we my dear student look at here we record complete complete 100% 100% goodwill we we compute and record complete 100% goodwill in full goodwill method okay this is the first characteristic don't forget now what's the formula see this is the formula look at here i have just enlarged it so that you can you can you can watch it clearly listen first of all you will write cost of investment obviously assume let's assume you have bought 80% shares of s company so obviously cost of investment is 80% so this is 80% cost of investment now we are one owners we are at one side we are standing and the other side nci is also the owner of s company nci is also the owner of s company and now we need to compute 100% goodwill so definitely we'll add this thing fair value of nci at acquisition fair value of nci at acquisition and my dear student in 90 90% or 80% questions this fair value of nci is ready made given this fair value of nci is ready made given is ready made given okay right so and sometimes and sometimes let me make it clear and sometimes you need to compute this fair value of nci sometime you need to compute this fair value of nci through s companies nci's number number of shares multiplied by share price s com nci's number of shares multiplied by share price right okay sometimes let me do one announcement i have we, our admin has shared a whatsapp group link in the chat box you can see you all should join because from tomorrow's we'll be, we'll we'll give you id class id through this whatsapp group okay so must join this whatsapp group so you will be given many more information through this whatsapp group okay be be active so now coi is 80% 20% is the fair value of nci this gives you total 100% this give you total 100% now then subtract fair value of net assets of s company now this fair value of s net assets is also 100% so automatically this goodwill this goodwill is also 100% so the first difference first difference between proportionate method and full goodwill method is in proportionate method only 80% only 80% goodwill is recorded in full goodwill method complete 100% goodwill is recorded right this is the first difference the goodwill and there is one more difference and that is nci and that is nci listen my lines very carefully in full goodwill method nci is reported at fair value in full goodwill method nci is reported at fair value nci is reported at fair value and this fair value is already given in the question and this fair value you have already used in goodwill calculation you have already used in goodwill calculation so now what you do you will write this fair value of nci at acquisition date but don't forget don't forget that this this fair value of nci fair value is given at acquisition date but you you are preparing balance sheet you are preparing balance sheet at sof period so you need to adjust you need to adjust s companies you need to adjust s companies post post retain earning share in this you need to adjust s companies post retained earning share post retain earning share in it okay so that's how that's how you calculate nci and obviously i i expect good from you that you guys must know you guys must know this these all just i'm giving you a quick recap okay and in this method and proportionate method consolidated reserve working is copy paste same either you are using proportionate method or full good method consolidated reserve working is total same no change no change no change at all okay so now the next topic before we move to the next topic i am giving you one more basic thing i am teaching you one more basic thing let me tell you one thing very clear there are different methods of teaching consolidation different style different style of teaching consolidation some teachers teaches through double entry 
some teacher teaches through BPP style, BPP kit style, and some teacher teaches through net asset style. I have taught in all these three styles in the last 15 years, but I found more easy, more easy to pick, more time saving style, and that is net asset style. Okay, so that's why I am following net asset approach. I am following net asset approach. Okay, now listen, this is very routine that each and every time, look at here. Each and every time you will make, let me change it. Let, each and every time you will make net assets packet. This is very routine. Acquisition date net asset and reporting date net asset packet. Acquisition date net asset and reporting date net asset. Look at here. So how much is the acquisition date this time? 20,000. Boys and girls, please be very active. Be very active and listen each and every word very carefully so that your journey goes very smooth. Now, Now acquisition date is 20,000 reporting date is 50,000. So definitely the post S companies post retain earning is 30,000. Now let me teach you some basic mathematical thing, math maths. For example, there is, there is 1000 expense, which S company forgot to record. There is one S 1000 expense, which S company forgot to record. So now that expense we should, we should deduct we should deduct that expense from s company's post profits so this will make this will make s company post profit as 29000 this will make s company's post profit as 29000 look at here repeat s company forgot to write 1000 expense in the pnl of s company so definitely the profits are overstated so now we need to adjust the post profit so we uh, now we we just adjusted this expense and then after the adjustment, the S company's post retain earning came out to be 29,000. Now wait, wait, I can do this. I can get this 29,000 through one more approach. One more. There is one more approach. No need. Listen, 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 no need to subtract. No need to subtract this 1000 from S company's post retain earning. Just do one thing. Look at here. Do one thing. Subtract subtract this 1000 subtract this 1000 from from closing from reporting date net assets packet subtract this 1000 from reporting date net assets packet see you will get the same result so now what's the reporting date packets total 10 plus 40 is 50 minus 1 50 minus 1 is 49 look at here 50 minus one is 49 and now 49 minus 20 is 29 see the same effect the same effect is in s company's post retain earning the same effect in s company's post retain earning yes or no yes or no so from now onwards what we'll do open your eyes and ears what we'll do whatever whatever we need to adjust in s company's post profits whatever we need to adjust in s company's post profits or post retain earning just adjust the same thing in the closing in the closing reporting date net asset packet you will get the same result you will get the same result okay don't forget it you will get the same result you just saw it you just saw it now these are very simple transaction P2S and S2P. Even you have studied this in with in your in your F3 paper and F7 as well. So first of all, first of all, P2S and S2P sale, P2S and S2P sale of inventory. You we all know that inventory is sold for resale. Inventory is sold for resale. So the profit of inventory is realized when goods are actually sold when goods are actually sold and when and when if the goods are not sold by the year end if the goods if the goods are not sold by the year end then that profit is unrealized okay so look at here look at here first of all on the screen you can see we 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 can't waste time on basic things okay but i'll just give you a quick recap you can see there is a p2s sale P company bought some goods, P company bought some goods for 200 and sold to S company for 500. That means parent company, parent company has booked 300 profit. But unfortunately, S company, S company has not sold these goods to third party. 
has not sold to these has not sold these goods to third party by the year end so from the group point of view from the group point of view this profit is unrealized this profit is unrealized okay so now we need we need to we need to remove we need to remove this unrealized profit from group accounts now how we'll do it just think it just think it you'll do it as as this this transaction is p2s as this transaction is p2s that means this unrealized profit is booked by parent company that means this unrealized profit is booked by parent company so it must be in parent company's pnl and through parent company pnl it, it goes in p company's retained earning so now it is present in parent company's p company's retained earning so now you need to remove from parent company's retained earning and when you remove something from parent company's retained earning automatically cr will be hit so what we do whenever we do p2s sale we remove we remove urp unrealized profit from consolidated reserve from consolidated reserve this is the first step and the second step when p company has sold expensive goods to s company when p company has sold expensive goods to s company that means year end s company's inventory is also overstated that means year end s company's inventory is also overstated so you need to remove urp from inventory of as well from group inventory as well don't forget this thing okay so read this step this is the P2S sale step. This is the P2S sale step. Quick, 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 please. Now, for S2P, look at here. For S2P, for S2P sale, if S company has sold goods to P company and P company has not sold goods to outside the group buyer end. So definitely now, now the URP, now the unrealized profit is booked by S company. Now the unrealized profit is booked by the S company. So URP is included. URP is included in S company's profits. URP is included in S company's profits. So obviously URP is included in S company's post retain earning. URP is included in S company's post retain earning. Now look at here. So the student will say, sir, yes, we need to remove it we need to remove urp from s company's post retained earning yes yes that's right but as i told you before five minutes that whatever you need to deduct whatever you need to deduct from s company's post retained earning just simply just simply deduct the same just simply deduct the same from s company's reporting date net asset packet you will get the same effect so now what we'll do read urp urp is deducted from S company's reporting date net assets. Reporting date, URP will be deducted from S company's reporting date net assets and group inventory, okay? So th that's that's the difference, that's simple difference. When P2S, if, if the sale is P2S, then URP will be deducted from consolidated reserve and group inventory. And if it is S2P, if it is S2P sale, then URP, then URP will be deducted look at here urp will be deducted from s company's reporting date net assets and group inventory okay i hope you remember these rules these are very basic things or even you didn't don't need to remember it just think it you can do it with concept as well Now, one more thing, how to calculate URP, how to calculate URP, wait, oh, there is one basic method of calculating URP and some students also use their own method. I'm telling you one basic method, whenever in case of inventory, in case of inventory, whenever you need to compute in case of inventory, P2S sale or S2P sale of inventory, and whenever you need to calculate URP, how you do it? First of all, calculate the total profit of the transaction. First of all, calculate the total profit of the transaction, number one. And number two step, just simply apply that total profit with the percentage of unsold inventory. Percentage of unsold inventory, the inventory that has not yet been sold by the year end, you will get the URP, okay? Repeat, for URP, 
first of all always calculate total profits first of all calculate the total profits okay and then multiply it with unsold inventory percentage of year end you will ready made get urp that's it that's the best method or you can see this see see in this question in this question it is written in the sketch you can see 30% goods are sold 30% goods are sold and this see this 70% are still with the company 70% are still with the s company so that that means 70% is urp that means 70% is urp 70% is urp okay right now one more topic and this topic is is only in f7 not in f3 not in f3 this is only specifically in f7 and svr and all these papers now p to s sale p to s sale of non current asset p to s sale of non current asset okay i'll try to do my best please uh, keep a line now for example see for example see this 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 screen parent company sold goods sold sorry sold plant parent company sold plant to s company with nbv with nbv of 1000 the carrying value at the date of sale the carrying value at the date of sale is 1000 and parent company sold this plant to s company for 1500 okay so one a within a second within a second you will calculate urp within a second you will calculate urp so what's the difference see what's the difference between these two 1500 and 1000 1500 and 1000 the gain on disposal or you can you call it profit on disposal is 500 gain on disposal or profit on disposal is 500 okay now wait as this is p2s sale the first step is very very quick as this is p2s sale this profit is booked by parent company as this is p2s sale that's why this profit is booked by parent company so pay it it's this this urp is in parent company's pnl so definitely in the parent company's retain earning so now when it is in the parent company's retain earning it is automatically automatically gone in consolidated reserve so first step you need to remove you need to remove this urp from consolidated reserve from consolidated reserve and group plant and machinery and group plant now it's not inventory now it's plant and machinery now it's not inventory now it's plant and machinery okay so you need to remove you need to remove it from group plant and machinery okay is is my voice clear boys and girls please please respond is my voice clear am i audible okay okay thank you thank you now so first of all you need to remove this 500 from consolidated reserve and group plant as this is p2s sale now one more thing just think s company look at me s company just bought this plant for 1500 s company just bought this plant for 1500 so s company started depreciating it using this 1500 amount and their life is 10 years so obviously in the s company's books in the s company's book s company has recorded 1500 divided by 10 1500 divided by 10 the depreciation of 150 s company has booked depreciation of 150 in its individual books in its individual books okay but you just think over it from the group point of view this is not a sale this is inside inside transaction this is not the sale so from the group point of view from the group point of view this asset must have been recorded at 1000 this asset must have been recorded at 1000 so from the group point of view it should have been depreciated using the same 1000 amount and 1000 divided by 10 is 100 so now let's compare s company has booked the depreciation of 150 and the from the group point of view it should only be 100 so how much how much extra extra depreciation how much extra depreciation s company has booked 50 50 open your ears and eyes s company has booked 50 50 50 extra depreciation now if you know depreciation is an expense that means s company has booked extra expense of 50 so s company's profits and s company retain earning will go down by 50 must have been go down by 50 now we need to reverse it we need to correct it so what i will do i will increase i will increase i will add i will add 50 
I will add 50 in S companies post trade in earning. And when I'll add 50 in S companies post trade in earning automatically, automatically, or in other words, I should, I should say, I should adjust S companies closing post net asset packets, sorry, closing net asset packets. I should adjust S companies reporting date net asset packet with this extra deposition. Okay. So now look at the first transaction. C P to S look at the screen. Look at the screen. Look at the screen, please. If non current asset is sold from P to S, what's the transit? There are two steps. URP is directed from CR and group plant. The second step excess excess depreciation will be added in S companies. Excess depreciation will be added in S companies reporting date net assets and group plant. Okay. And now, and now, now, if this is S to P sale, you have to do vice versa. If this is S to P sale, you have to do vice versa. What? If this is S to P sale, then definitely S to P sale. Think over it. S to P sale URP is booked by S company in S to P sale URP is booked by S company. So definitely we'll remove URP from S company's books. And when we'll remove URP from S company's books, so we need to adjust, we need to deduct, we need to subtract S company's reporting date net asset packet. See the first step URP is directed from S company's reporting date net asset packet and group plan. This is the first step. And now when, when this is S to P sale, now when this is S to P sale, now when this is S to P sale, that means this time, this time, think over it, extra depreciation is booked by parent company. This time extra, 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 extra depreciation is booked by parent company. So definitely we need to adjust. We need to add CR. We need to add CR. We need to add CR and group plant with, with excess deposition, with excess deposition. Look at here. Look at here. Now, types of consideration types of consideration types of consideration simple when parent company buys s company that means the running business of s company so definitely parent company buys from some people the existing owners of s company even this topic you have studied in ratio analysis oh one question somebody asked cr means consolidated reserve cr means consolidated reserve or consolidated retain earning uh, one question will you provide these notes yes i'll share these slides on the whatsapp group don't worry don't worry. I'll share everything now. So uh, when parent company acquires or take over S company, so definitely parent company gives some price. Parent companies give some consideration to the owners, to the existing owners of S company, right? So there are different ways. There are different ways in which you can give, in which you can give consideration, in which you can give consideration to your uh, to the s company's existing owners the first and the very super hit super hit that is cash consideration that is cash consideration this is very easy you can just look at it parent company pays cash so the entry will be debit investment credit cash debit investment credit cash sometime parent company issues parent company issues its own shares to the s company's existing owners it means in real in reality in reality think over it it's like exchange of shares. It's like, it's like exchange of shares, parent company buying S company shares and in return parent company issuing its own shares, right? So what's the entry as parent company has just bought these shares of another company. And whenever one company buys shares of another company, this is investment. This is investment. So what we do debit investment, debit investment. Now wait, now parent company just issued new shares. Parent company just issued new shares. Whatever come whenever any company, any company issues new shares, they credit ordinary share capital with face value and the remaining difference will go in share premium. Okay. So the entry is debit investment, credit share capital and credit share premium. Okay. Now the third, third, 
the third style of consideration is loan note consideration sometime it happens parent company when parent company buys shares of s company when parent company buys shares of s company in return in return parent company issues its own shares in sorry in return parent company issues the loan notes parent company issues its own loan notes right so what's the entry see parent company has just bought the shares of another company parent company has just bought the shares of another company so debit investment and in return parent company has issued loan notes and you studied this in financial instrument or basic on in your basic f3 whoever company issues loan note that means liability in the, in their books okay so loan notes is a liability issuing loan note is a liability okay so that's the that's the third 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 way of consideration now there is one more way of consideration normally this it comes in sdr but it's very easy so i can explain you in in one minute uh, or maybe it may come in your paper now that is fixed asset consideration fixed asset consideration fixed asset consideration what is fixed asset consideration look at here parent company has just bought the shares of s company and in return parent company has given a fixed asset a fixed asset a land or plant and machinery as as a consideration yes it is possible so what will be the entry now wait parent company has bought the shares with market value of 5 million okay so we have just bought the shares so investment will be debited by 5 million and the carrying value of our land at the date at the rate of this transaction is 3 million so just simply think over it the carrying value of our 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 non current asset was 3 million but in return we got 5 million shares in return we got 5 million shares so obviously this is there is a gain on disposal of 2 million there is a gain on disposal of 2 million which, which is to be booked in pnl so the entry will be investment debit land credit parent company has given away given away the land to the s company's owners and the pnl credit now one technical issue please don't get confused sir sir do we book this gain in, in our consolidated pnl yes we'll book this gain why this is not an intercompany transaction this is not an intercompany transaction but parent company has given this this land to the s company shareholders they just think over it they are human beings it's not s company i repeat parent company has not given look at here parent company has not given this land to s company no parent company has given this land to s company shareholders existing owners okay so this profit is totally realized from group point of view shareholders are external people if there is a transaction between p and s p company and s company and there is a profit then that profit is unrealized this is a technical concept now very very famous famous topic deferred consideration deferred consideration what does it mean very simple you must have studied by now if you are if you if you are f7 fr student listen deferred consideration means parent company parent company has just bought the shares of s company from the s company shareholders and parent company in return just do just gave the promise words that we'll pay you next year or we'll pay you after 2 years okay so now the basic thing of f7 the basic basic idea of f7 i hope you remember whatever payments are deferred for one year or more whatever payments or obligations which we have to pay within one year or more we need to discount it we need to discount it okay so what what is the first step Com compute this is not complete this is compute compute present value compute present value of future cash flows and make entry wait first of all if you are paying see the screen if you are paying you have to pay 1100 after one year so just first of all compute compute the compute the present value the present value of that 1100 now is 1000 so what you will do you will make the entry debit investment and credit credit deferred consideration investment debit and credit deferred consideration because you promise it's your obligation see this is the first entry look at look at look at look at here look at here 
debit investment debit investment and credit deferred consideration it's your liability now when this whole year will be passed you need to do unwinding of discount you need to do unwinding of discount this is unwinding of discount okay and whatever let me tell you the one super hit dialogue one super hit dialogue whatever rate is used for discounting whatever rate is used is used is used for discounting the same rate is to be used for unwinding okay and so the difference between 1000 and 1100 as this is only one year one year transaction so the difference between 1000 and 1100 is 100 so what what entry you will make you will make the entry debit in debit interest expense and credit that liability that credit that liability and when you credit this liability so automatically see automatically this 1000 this 1000 c plus this 100 this will become 1100 and 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 you have to pay 1100 to the to the other party so automatically at the year end your liability will come to 1100 your liability comes to 1100 right now one more thing you may ask you may ask sir why have you written cr here why have you written cr here with interest expense because because look at here let me give you logic as as this this liability was the liability of parent company this deferred consideration was the liability of parent company because parent company gave the words parent company gave the words to s company shareholders so this is the liability of parent company so definitely when this liability belongs to parent company this interest expense belongs to parent company as well and in 99.9% .9 questions 99.9% .9 question examiner examiners does not record this complete transaction of deferred consideration so you need to do it yourself so that means this interest expense has not already booked by by the examiner this interest expense has not ready made booked by the accountant so now when when you will book now when you will book this interest expense of parent company so parent company profits will go down and when parent company profit goes down parent company's retain earning goes down and when parent company's retain earning goes down automatically consolidated reserve will go down are you getting are you getting okay so this this these are the two entries these are the two entries for deferred consideration and today i'll try in the past paper we'll also do this 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 part topic we'll also do in the past paper okay so don't forget don't forget and this investment will be this investment 1000 will be part of your coi cost of investment cost of investment okay now one more thing very interesting thing listen with the deferred consideration i have written unconditional promise to pay cash unconditional promise to pay cash that means no conditions attached no conditions attached i have open parent company has openly told us companies owners yes we will pay you the amount at any cost this is not a conditional payment this is not a con this is unconditional payment unconditional parent company has to pay has to pay okay no conditions attached now there is one last consideration there is one last consideration which is called contingent consideration contingent consideration and now now read now read the word conditional promise to pay cash conditional promise to pay cash now parent company has told s company's owners that we'll give you we'll give you 2 million cash after 2 years if 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 this company's profits goes up or if this company eps go, touches this if the market price goes this way so definitely now the conditional promise now the conditional promise okay now after 2008 open your ears open your ears and eyes after 2008 according to the revised ifrs3 business combination according to the revised ifrs3 business combination contingent consideration must always be recorded at fair value don't forget contingent consideration must always be recorded at fair value at acquisition date see this at fair value at acquisition date okay 
and this fair value 99.9 in 99.9 percent .9 cases this fair value will be ready made given to you i repeat according to revised standard ifrs 3 business combination contingent consideration must always be recorded at fair value at its fair value of acquisition date and this fair value will be given ready made to you this fair value will be given ready made to you okay wait azan is going on Okay, uh, we are taking a short, uh, quick namaz break of I think seven to eight minutes, and then we'll shortly start resume the session. Okay, right, and then I'll answer your questions. Uh, one quest, one student has asked a question about the legal cost to acquire. All professional cost to acquire uh, at the time of acquisition goes goes in PNL simply. PNL means CR. Parent companies PNL means CR. Okay, a short break. Okay. Okay, students, please be active. Now, we have contingent consideration. What is contingent consideration? I just told you before the mass break that now parent company has, has done conditional promise, conditional promise, okay? So how we are going to record it according to revised IFRS 3 business combination contingent consideration are recorded at fair value contingent consideration are recorded at fair value. Okay. And this fair value is normally ready made given to you in the question. So let, for example, giving you one example. And I think this example came in one past paper as well. Pekin, Pekin. There is a very famous question, Pekin. In the Pekin question, this this example is given. So, for example, uh, in this question, there is a contingent consideration and the fair value and the fair value of that constant contingent consideration at acquisition date is one thousand. Fair value of contingent consideration at acquisition date is one thousand. Okay. So what you make, what you what entry you make at the acquisition date, you will make entry debit investment. Obviously, parent company is buying shares. Debit investment and credit contingent consideration. Debit investment and credit contingent consideration. Okay. And this is your liability. Normally, it's your liability, right? Now, look at me. Now it is possible that after a year that means at the end of the reporting date the the conditions may fluctuate the conditions sorry the the reality may fluctuate for example you promise to pay but uh, 
now there is less chances less chances of paying so automatically the fair value of that liability the fair value of that liability may be revised so now the fair value of that liability is only 700 fair value of that contingent consideration obligation is only 700 so at the acquisition date it was 1000 now it's 700 so how we are going to account for this change we'll simply report it in we'll simply report it in consolidated reserve wait we'll make the entry our liability was initially 1000 now your liability is only only 700 so what entry you will make you will make the entry contingent consideration debit your li debit your liability you will debit your liability contingent consideration debit and pnl income credit and when you will credit pnl of parent company and when you will credit pnl of parent company when you will when you will credit pnl of parent company obviously profits of parent company will go up and when profits of parent company goes up consolidated retain earning automatically goes up group retain earning automatically automatically goes up okay so these two entries you have to make these two entries you have to make right okay you can see quick quick read it read it don't worry about the slides we'll pro i'll provide you now let's move to one more topic and that is that is fair value adjustment that is fair value adjustment that is fair value adjustment now wait as we all know as we all know look at here as we all know that the formula that the formula for goodwill calculation is cost of investment assuming the holding is 100 percent assume it assuming the holding is 100 percent please look at me assuming the holding is 100 percent so let us say the the formula of goodwill is cost of investment less 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 fair value see less which value fair value fair value fair value fair value of net assets of s company what's the formula of goodwill calculation cost of investment less which value come on come on say it fair value fair value of net assets of s company so this is mandatory this is mandatory obligatory that s company's net assets must be at fair value but this is not always the case so it in many questions or i must say in all questions of sofp sofp all questions of sofp normally s company's net assets are not at fair value so you need to do it and this act and this act or this hard work is called fair value adjustment okay so just remember this number this equation c is equal to a minus l c is equal to a minus l already it is written c is equal to a minus l so how how do they give it for example you have a land of s company s company has a land with carrying value already carrying value is six four thousand but the fair value is six thousand that means s company's land is not at fair value so you need to bring it to fair value so from four thousand to six thousand there is a there is there is an upward journey from four thousand to six thousand there is an upward journey so you will increase you will increase s company's assets by 2000 you will revalue increase or revalue you will increase s company's assets by 2000 so automatically when assets goes up the net assets also goes up okay so what you will do how you'll post see you will post this in s company's net assets packet at acquisition date s company's net assets packet at acquisition date and now and now as this is a non depreciating asset the first case is as now this is a non 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 depreciating asset this is a non depreciating asset this is a non depreciating asset so the value has not changed at the reporting date so you will adjust the same amount you will adjust the same amount in reporting date packet okay so how 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 are we going to account the fair value adjustment how are we going to account the fair value adjustment fair value adjustments are simply are simply adjusted in reporting date net assets packet reporting date net assets packet sorry acquisition date net asset packet and reporting date net asset packet and 
as this is as this is a non depreciating asset in the case one we were we were studying uh, we we took the example of non depreciating asset that's why the same amount in both packets same amount in both packets now the student may ask sir 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 what 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 uh, uh, sir uh, you have increased the net assets you have increased the net asset packet yes so do we do you adjust the assets as well of s company yes obviously look listen my dialogue whatever i will show you the written form as well whatever is adjusted whatever is adjusted in reporting date net asset packet whatever is adjusted in reporting date net asset packet is also adjusted in on on the s company's sofp as well whatever is adjusted in reporting date net assets packet is also adjusted in the closing sofp as well okay okay now if this is a if this is going to be a depreciating asset for example for example the same the same thing is with the plant for example you have a plant of s company come on quick quick you have the plant of s company with carrying value of 6000 you have a plant of s company with carrying value of uh 6000 and fair value of 10000 so from 6 to 10 from 6 to 10 6 to 10 how much is the upward revaluation the upward revaluation is 4000 from 6000 to 10000 the upward revaluation is 4000 okay so at the acquisition date open your eyes open your eyes at the acquisition date look at the screen you will adjust 4000 at the acquisition date you will adjust 4000 okay now what are you going to do what you are going to do in the reporting date now as this is a depreciating asset so definitely there will be some there will be some there will be some extra depreciation on this revaluation obviously this revalued amount will also be depreciated this revalued amount will also be depreciated so as the life is 10 years so 4000 divided by 10 is 400 now one very important exam examination tip listen always 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 please boys and girls boys and girls please always don't forget to check the distance don't forget to check the distance between acquisition date and reporting date don't forget to measure check the distance between acquisition date and reporting date here the distance is clearly one year one year so only one year depreciation you need to adjust what if what if if this distance is two years or three years or four years so you need to adjust two three years depreciation in the closing in the in the closing reporting date net asset packet okay because right now we are doing sofp right now we are doing sofp and sofp is always made as at and sofp is always made as at sofp is always made as at okay right right so as this is only one year difference so 4000 divided by 10 how much is the depreciation 400 is the depreciation so the 4000 element is depreciated by 400 only so what else is left 3600 is left 3600 is left 3600 will be adjusted in closing reporting date net asset this is for depreciating asset boys and girls this is this is for depreciating assets okay okay now again the same dialog again the same dialog repeat whatever which number we adjusted which number this time we adjusted in reporting date net asset packet which number we adjusted in reporting date net asset packet this is 3600 which number we adjusted in reporting date net asset packet which number we report we adjusted in reporting date net asset packet the number is the number is 3600 so this number is also adjusted on the asset side this number is also adjusted added added on the asset side of s company's sofp right or simply in simple term consolidated sofp right okay now one thing one more thing some students gets confused with the downward fair value adjustment listen look at here look at here some students gets confused with the downward this was upward this was upward fair value adjustment what if the same question with downward look at here let me change the number 
for example for example the carrying value is 10000 boys and girls please the carrying value is 10000 and the fair value is wait the fair value is 6000 okay so from 10 to 6 from 10 to 6 there is a downward journey downward journey 4000 downward revolution now how you are going to account for how are you going to account for this downward fair value adjustment how are you going to account for this downward fair value adjustment same exactly same just with negative sign exactly same treatment let's look at me exactly same treatment with negative sign look at here what you will do you will just write 4000 negative here and and 3600 negative here that's it same thing same thing same method everything same with negative signs that's it 4000 negative at the acquisition and 3600 negative at the reporting date that's it same same treatment but with negative numbers and obviously in the reporting date net asset packet you have used a negative number in the reporting date net asset packet you have used a negative number so that's why so that's why on the asset side as well on the asset side you have to use a negative number on the asset side you have to use a negative number right negative number you have to adjust now now read this line in the fair value adjustment topic sometime it happens that we acquired we acquired one subsidiary company look at here we acquired a subsidiary company and there is there is one unrecognized intangible asset with s company why maybe s company has some in maybe maybe s company has some internally generated brand s company has some inter internally generated brand with them okay so according to is 38 i hope you remember is 38 according to is 38 a single company uh, one company one company cannot recognize one company cannot recognize the internally generated brand of him of the same company right for example mirchawala institute has launched a brand internally so mirchawala institute cannot record mirchawala institute cannot cannot record that brand in his books okay so s company has one unrecognized intangible asset has one unrecognized intangible asset at the date of acquisition okay internally generated brand now now parent company has acquired a subsidiary company so now for parent company now for parent company this group this brand is purchase brand now for parent company this brand is purchase brand so what parent company will do parent company will give look listen the words parent company will give the birth 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 to this to this brand at the date of acquisition we'll we we will we will recognize this brand in the consolidated books and this will be treated as an upward fair value adjustment this will be treated as an upward fair value it's the same c is equal to a minus l look at here c upward asset and upward 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 capital okay and this will be treated as a as a normal fair value adjustment normal fair value adjustment upward and if and if there is a life there is a there is a finite life of this brand is given if finite life of this brand is given then you need to depreciate this depreciate in the same way we did you need to depreciate that asset in the same way we did we did okay right the same thing so this sometime in fair value adjustment you see the fair value adjustments of brands customer list intangible assets right so get ready you have to face it or 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 one more thing okay okay boys and girls the formula of goodwill is coi the formula for cal calculation of goodwill is coi cost of investment less fair value of net assets look at the screen the formula for goodwill is coi i've just enlarged it the formula of goodwill is coi less fair value fair value fair value fair value of net assets of s company fair value of net assets of s company right and net asset means this c net asset means this c this c is the net asset this c is the net assets so 
in the 90% questions, 90% question, you, you, you see the fair value adjustment of asset. You see the fair value adjustment of this asset only. But sometimes, once in a blue moon, they give you the fair value adjustment of liability as well. They give you the fair value adjustment of liability because yes, net assets, net asset has has linked with the liability. Assets, less liabilities, assets, less liabilities. So in your exam, you may find, in your exam, you may find fair value adjustment of liability. And I hope you have studied this topic, fair value adjustment of contingent liability. Okay, so you will be given ready-made fair value of liability and you need to adjust that fair value adjust of liability through base in the same net assets packet, in the same net assets packet as we just did. Okay, so get ready for such transactions. Now, one more topic and definitely we will be doing one past paper for income statement as well. Consolidated income statement, consolidated income statement. Now, what, how we have to, how we do consolidated income statement, how we do consolidated income statement. Look at here. This is P company and this is S company's income statement. This is P companies and this is S company's income statement. Look at here. Whatever is the last step of balance sheet in the balance sheet you in the last step you do adding together in the SOFP last step you do adding together but in the income statement income statement just think this is the first step whenever you are given two income statement just do tuck, 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 adding together simple 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 adding together simple adding together so one plus two is three this is cost of sales this is GP this is operating this is operating expenses okay okay and this is your total profit that's it so the first step is simple adding together but now now as you just did adding together and then you realized after doing adding together you realized that the holding of parent company the holding of parent company in subsidiary, in subsidiary company is only 70 percent the holding of parent company in subsidiary companies in subsidiary companies income statement is only only 70 percent okay but we did complete adding together so now we need to compute nci now we need to compute nci and, and how do we calculate nci for income statement how do we calculate nci for income statement this is the super hit formula super hit what is the formula S company's profit after tax multiplied by NCA holding percentage. S company's profit after tax multiplied by holding percentage. So S company's profit after tax is just 1500 times 30%. This is 450. Okay. So now, now we just did 100% adding together. We got after doing 100% adding together, we got 2200. But we can see, we can see, and we can think, we can think from this 2200, from this 2200. 450 belongs to 450 belongs to NCI. So what's the parent company's share? Parent company's owner shares is 2200. Parent company's owner shares is 2200 less 450. So I hope you remember these three lines. I hope you remember these three lines. What are these three lines? First of, first of all, you write the complete profit. First of all, you write the complete profit that is 2200. And from this profit, how much profit belongs to NCI? 450 belongs to NCI and 2200 less 450. 2200 less 450. 1750. 1750 belongs to equity owners of P company. 1750 belongs to equity owners of P company. Okay, so simple three steps, three steps of income statement. Come on, come on, quick. Adding together adding together then do nci and then these three lines adding together nci and then these three lines this is the basics now i'm going to give you a super concept because sometime in advanced level some some students ask me to do a five minutes revision five minute revision of consolidated income statement i tell them one thing i just i just focus on one thing and now i'm going to do that with you can you see the two income statement with you can you see the two income statement parent and subsidiary parent and subsidiary yes parent companies income statement is 
completely added is completely added added with subsidiaries income statement see one plus two you get this three thousand sales parent com parent company's data is totally 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 added in 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 subsidiary company's income with subs subsidiary company's income statement to get consolidated things okay so now first dialogue whatever problem whatever problem is with the parent company's income statement that problem will will be carried forward to the consolidated income statement for example if by mistake parent company's sales is understated so automatically when this this problem will be carried forward to the consolidated income statement as well if the if parent company sales is wrong then automatically consolidated sales is also wrong if if there is a problem with operating expenses of parent company if there is a problem with operating expenses of parent company then automatically the same problem will be with the consolidated operating expenses okay so if you do any mistake or if you forgot if you forgot to record anything in parent company's income statement automatically that problem will be shifted that problem will be shifted to s to consolidated income statement and you need to adjust that thing in consolidated income statement but but with subsidiary companies the the story is different with subsidiary companies income statement the story is different see subsidiary companies data is added is added subsidiary company data is added with p company to get consolidated data subsidiary companies income statement data is added with p company to get consolidated consolidated data plus plus subsidiary companies profit after tax also also is also used to calculate nci because the 30 percent owners are nci people right so now listen the words whenever whenever there is a mistake in s company's book whenever there is any problem in s company's income statement s company's income statement that problem that problem will not only affect that problem will not only affect the consolidated soci that problem will not only affect the consolidated soci but will also affect the nci working that's it that's it that was the real summary i repeat if there is a problem with parent company in parent company's books parent company's income statement that problem will only be adjusted in consolidated soci okay but if there is a problem if there is a problem if there is a problem with if there is a problem with subsidiary companies in subsidiary companies books in subsidiary companies income statement then that problem will affect not only consolidated soci but also nci working as well that's the real theme if you if you understand this you understood the whole topic the whole topic is just moving around these two lines now let me share you some data as we are on the revision days so we can't we can't do like things like normal class okay now p to s sale p to s sale of inventory p to s sale of inventory this topic i i i i teach in f3 as well because i am I, I teach f3 as well f3 financial accounting so now whenever there is a p to s sale there is a p to s sale that means this within the group sale within the group sale so this this sale is recorded in in the sales of one company and cost of sales of other company sales of parent and cost of sales for subsidiary so the as this is within the group transaction we need to eliminate so what's the first step what's the first step c p company sold goods to s company for 500 there is there is an inter company sales of 500 there is an inter company sales of 500 inter company sales of 500 okay so now what we do Cons first step consolidated sales and cost of sale will be reduced by the amount of transaction by the amount of transaction what are whatever transaction has is done whatever transaction is done we'll remove it we'll remove it from sales and cost of sales okay from sales and cost of sales so right right now in this question that number is that number is 500 that number is 500 so 500 we'll remove from consolidated sales and consolidated cost of sales okay now 
the next step what if what if if there is some urp in this case what if if there is some urp in this in this story so now as look at me as the sale is p to s as the sale is p to s that urp that urp is booked by parent company as the sale is p to s that urp is booked by parent company so this urp look at look at my video this urp is present in this white is this in this parent company's pnl assume this white pen assume this white pen is parent company's pnl assume this white pen is parent company's pnl so when this urp is in parent company's pnl so look at here look at the screen and when we add these two when we do adding together this will go this urp will go in consolidated pnl as well so you need to remove you need to remove that urp from consolidated pnl and how you will remove it by c urp will be added in consolidated cost of sales and when you increase the consolidated cost of sales automatically automatically the consolidated profits will go down automatically the consolidated profits will go down okay so there are just two steps in p2s sale there are just two steps in p2s sale of inventory and income statement check it check it out please check it out please and believe me again this this concept is linked to linked to the thing which i told you the concept which i gave you now s to p sale with s to p sale everything is same first of all within the group transaction sales and cost of sale will be removed remove will be removed from consolidation number 2 if there is if there is some urp if there is some urp now just think this time this time it's s to p sale this time it's s to p sale so urp in s company's book as this time it's s to p sale that's why urp in s company's books urp in s company's books so so you need to remove you need if so when urp in s company's book it will automatically carry it forward it will it will automatically go in the group book c as urp in s company's books so after adding together that urp will be shifted to group books so first of all first of all you need to adjust group books first of all you need to adjust group book c urp urp will be added in consolidated means group cost of sales and the third step hope you remember the original concept as this time the sale is s to p this time the sale is s to p that means urp in s company's books urp in s company's books so it must it must hit it must affect nci as well so you need to you need to remove c urp will be deducted or remove urp will be deducted from s company's profit after tax in the calculation of nci in the calculation of nci okay so these are the steps for p to s and s to p sale p to s and s to p sale of inventory okay p to s and s to p sale of inventory now p to s and s to p sale of fixed asset i have seen many students in my life they do mistake in here because of a very basic concept because of the problem of very basic concept of related to basic accounting first of all when you sell basic accounting very basic when you sell inventory to somebody when you sell inventory to somebody you book sales you book sales that's your income but when you sell fixed asset to somebody you never record it in sales that is your capital receipts that that that's not going to be recorded in the sales portion okay be careful don't forget this a very basic thing so now if if p company this example i already gave you in the balance sheet thing p company with net, with non current asset of nbv of 1000 p 
पी कंपनी विथ नॉन करेंट एसिड ऑफ एन बी वी ऑफ वन थाउजेंड सोल्ड टू एस कंपनी सोल्ड टू एस कंपनी फॉर फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड ओके बट स्टिल दिस इज दिस विल नॉट गोइंग टू कम इन सेल्स पोर्शन सेल्स दिस इज नॉट योर सेल्स रेवेन्यू माई डियर दिस इज नॉन करेंट एसिड दिस इज नॉट इन्वेंटोरी ओके सो नो मोर नो मोर sales and cost of sales cutting the that the, the same step step we did in with inventory here that that step is no more now what are the steps use your brain use your brain and you will understand now first of all first of all p2s p2s c as the sale is p2s that means p company sold non current asset with nbv of 1000 to s company for 1500 that means p company booked urp of 500 P company, P company booked URP of five hundred. So the URP is in parent company's PNL. URP is in parent company's PNL. So automatically this URP will 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 go in the consolidated PNL. So first of all you need to adjust consolidated consolidated figure. See, URP will be added, will be added, will be added in consolidated cost of sales. So automatically when you increase the cost of sales, your G your gross profit will go down. when you increase the cost of sales your gross profit will go down and your urp will be removed so this first step is done now now the second second and third step hope you your brain is, brain is active as p company sold non current asset of 1000 to s company for 1500 sold expensive so s company bought it for 1500 and in the individual books of s company S company must have recorded the depreciation according to fifteen hundred number, according to fifteen hundred number, right? So that means that means S companies that means my dear students, S company has booked extra extra depreciation, and you have studied you all boys and girls you have studied final accounts you have studied final accounts depreciation is normally recorded in cost of sales nowadays in recent new questions depreciation is adjusted in cost of sales okay so. S company has booked extra, extra, extra depreciation. Okay, so you need to remove. You need to remove that extra depreciation, and you will remove. You will deduct it from S company's cost of sales. See, excess depreciation will be deducted, deducted because S company has overbooked. S company has overbooked the depreciation. Consolidated cost of sales, and the third thing. as this time the extra extra depreciation is in the s company's pnl as this time the extra 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 depreciation is in s company's pnl so definitely you need to correct you need to repair the nci excess depreciation will be excess depreciation will be added in s company's profit after tax in the calculation of nci in the calculation of nci okay so these are the steps for p to s p to s sale of fixed asset p to s sale of fixed asset okay now just simply reverse it for s to p for s to p you read it s to p you read it for s to p reverse the thing and think over it simple it's simple it's not difficult at all in s to p obviously urp is booked by s company so urp will be adjusted in consolidated cost of sale as well as in nci as well as for nci as well look at the have a look please now how to treat excess depreciation how to treat excess depreciation of fair value adjustment first thing first of all we are doing income statement we are doing income statement not balance sheet so 
if you if you if you do fair value adjustment you change the value of asset it it won't hit your income statement it won't hit your income statement but yes but yes if you are doing look at here if you are doing if you are doing fair value adjustment of a depreciating asset if you are doing fair value adjustment of depreciating asset yes yes so then extra excess depreciation must be adjusted in consolidated PL. That's a PL thing. Depreciation is a PL thing. Now, first of all, don't forget you have studied final accounts. You have studied, even I'll make you revise some of the questions of final accounts. Don't worry. So, you know, in final accounts, in final accounts, normally depreciation is booked in cost of sales. So, first of all, all make your mind that depreciation is a cost of sales item depreciation is a cost of sales items okay make your mind so now see there is a there is an upward fair value adjustment of s company's plant s company's plant was already already recorded s company's plant was already recorded at 10000 look at here but the fair value of that plant is 15000 so from group point of view from group point of view from group point of view we have revalued we have revalued this plant from 10 to 15 but s company's accountant doesn't know this thing s company accountant has no knowledge of this thing and in the s company's individual books this asset is still this asset is still at 10000 so definitely s company's accountant has booked depreciation according to 10000 but from the group point of view, it should have been booked. The depreciation should have been booked using the 15,000 value. So that means that means in case of upward fair value adjustment, S company has underbooked the depreciation. S company has booked the less depreciation. So now S company's PNL is wrong. S there is a defect in S company's income statement. So now what you will do, you will, you will, you will increase s company's depreciation as com you will book extra depreciation and extra depreciation definitely is booked in cost of sales depreciation is booked in cost of sales so the first step is excess depreciation will be added will be added in consolidated cost of sales excess depreciation will be added in consolidated cost of sales okay and now use your brain i'm sorry i'm sorry use your this brain now as there is a defect as there is a defect in as there is a defect in s company's income statement so definitely nci definitely nc definitely nci will also be affected definitely nci will also be affected nci will also be affected c okay and now you guys are not in kg or nursery <laughs> you are matured guys this this whatever is written here is for upward fair value adjustment just do upside down for downward fair value adjustment just do just apply the reverse rules for downward fair value adjustment deposition okay have a look have a look have a look have a look now for impairment now impairment of goodwill impairment of goodwill don't forget goodwill is never recorded in individual books of s company good for s company the goodwill is internally generated for s company the goodwill is internally generated but yes for from the group point of view this is a purchase goodwill from the group point of view this is a purchase goodwill that means goodwill is never ever recorded ready-made in the s company's books okay so when goodwill is not recorded in the S company's book, that means impairment of goodwill has not yet been adjusted, has not yet been adjusted in the consolidated books. You have to adjust by your own. You have to adjust by your own. Now, what's the concept? Very good concept. Listen, and this concept is again linked with that point, which I told you this in the starting of income statement. Look at here. As in full goodwill method, in full goodwill method, goodwill is considered to be a complete asset of S company. In full goodwill method, goodwill is considered to be a complete, 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 complete asset, full asset of S company. 
so when goodwill goes down that means s this is the loss of s company when goodwill value goes down this is the loss of s company so we that means that means we should adjust s company's individual income statement but we have not we have not done this yet we have not done this yet so that means now just assume that the defect the defect is in s company's individual books when the defect is in s company's individual books so automatically this defect is carried forward to the consolidated books so the first step first step impairment of goodwill will be added in consolidated operating expenses impairment of goodwill is added in consolidated operating expenses and number 2 as this is the full goodwill method as this is the full goodwill method and i just told you that goodwill belongs to s company in full goodwill method goodwill belongs to s company so and s company has not already recorded this expense so that's why it must be adjusted in nci as well see see this see this see this this is the impairment of goodwill this is the this is the treatment of impairment of goodwill this is the treatment of impairment of goodwill but now what if what if if you are doing with proportionate method think over it if you are doing the same impairment of goodwill adjustment with proportionate method in proportionate method you remember i taught you in the beginning in proportionate method goodwill is only 80% recorded for example parent company just holds 80% shares of s company so pay the goodwill in the consolidated books is only 80% that means in proportionate method listen to my words in proportionate method goodwill is considered to be a goodwill is considered to be a separate asset of p company pure p company's asset and when p company's assets goes down this is the loss of p company so this time no more adjustment in nci only only look at here only see this this is proportionate method this is proportionate method in proportionate method only 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 consolidated operating expenses are adjusted no more nci adjustment okay don't forget these are basic things these are basic things now very simple thing i taught you i just taught you i just taught you i just taught you the types of consideration uh, that deferred consideration hope you remember there is an interest expense arises in interest expense or unwinding of discount arises in arises in deferred consideration and that unwinding of discount belongs to belongs to parent company because p company p company promised to s company shareholders for the payment p company promised s company shareholders for the payment so this deferred consideration is the loan of parent company okay as this deferred consideration is the loan of parent company as this deferred consideration is the loan of parent company that's why the interest expense of deferred consideration also belongs belongs solely solely to parent company and this interest expense has not already been adjusted this interest expense or unwinding of discount has not already been adjusted in consolidated pnl so you will only you will only increase the consolidated finance cost no more nci no more nci don't forget the concept this Con this deferred consideration interest belongs to parent company, not not subsidiary company. So what you will do? See this. You will do unwinding of discount. Look at here. Unwinding of discount is will be added in consolidated finance cost in the income statement. Unwinding of discount. Unwinding of discount will be added in consolidated finance cost. Consolidated finance cost. Okay. No more NCI. No more NCI. As this transaction, as this loan belongs to P company, so that's why only consolidated PNL will be adjusted. No more NCI. One more thing. 
you know, we just cancel out uh, inter companies things. Sometime it happens that P company, I will, te I will teach this question uh, today as well in the past paper. Sometime parent company gives, parent company gives loan to S company. Okay. So, so in that case, there is an interest income in the P company's PNL and the corresponding interest expense in S company's PNL. So you need to cut, you need to cut, you need to cut, you need to cut this, that, that inter company's interest expense and interest income. Okay. That's must. If you forgot, if you forgot to do this, so this interest income will come here and interest expense will come here. Obviously the net effect is zero. Obviously the net effect is zero, but you will be penalized. You will be penalized for this presentation error. This is presentation error. It's not allowed to book the same loan interest income and expense in the same books. Not for it. it it's impossible, right? So you must cut all these intercompanies things. And what are those intercompanies things? Come on, come on, have a quick review. Number one, intercompany loans. If parent company has given loan to S company, if parent company has given loan to S company, so interest income in P company's books and interest expense in S company's books, we'll simply cancel it out. Okay. Number two, number two, if parent company has given a uh, building on rent to S company, so rental income in parent company's books and rental expense in S company's books again cancel out. And the third example for this are dividends. Are dividends. Sometimes what happens? Sometimes what happens? Look at here. S company, S companies gives dividends to P company, obviously, because parent company is the biggest shareholder of S company. Parent company is the biggest, biggest shareholder, biggest shareholder of S company. Parent company is the biggest shareholder of S company. So in that case, in that case, in that case, in that case, we need to, we need to cancel out the dividends as well. Okay. Dividends from S company will be canceling out. Okay. Now, very important area. It may come for two, three or five marks. Now, you know, there is one lab normally this can, so I, I normally say this to my students that this consolidation topics is about the level of investments is about the level of investments. So the biggest and the highest level is control. The highest level is control. When one company acquires more than 50% shares of another company, it gets control. And with control, the accounting is consolidation, adding together from top to bottom, from top to bottom, we do adding together. There is one lesser level. The second level of investment is, is significant influence. Sometimes what happens when we buy, sometimes what happens when we buy more than 20% and less than 50, 20 to 50, this is, this is the criteria more than 20% and less than 50% shares of some company, then we get significant influence. Then we get significant influence of that company. What is the definition of significant influence? Power to participate, power to participate in financing and operating policy of an entity. Now, how this significant influence is verified? Wait, you have more than 20% shares. That means out of 10 directors, two or three directors, two or three directors of yours will sit in the board of associate company. That means two directors or three di directors are sitting from your side. That means you have a voice, you have a voice, you have a say, you have a say in the, in the, in the board of that company. So you can exert, you can exert significant influence. You can exert significant influence, right? So now with significant influence, no more adding together, please strictly no more adding together. Only what we do, we do one line adjustment equity accounting. This is very famous accounting one line adjustment equity equity accounting. Now what we do in the balance sheet, what we do in the balance sheet, what we do in the balance sheet, we'll do one line adjustment on the asset side. We do one line adjustment on the asset side and that one line adjustment is see this carrying value of investment in associate. See this line carrying value of investment in associate. Now 
how to calculate this carrying value of investment and associate please boys and girls be active you have studied something related to this in your f3 and f7 both papers please first of all in the sofp you will write coi coi means cost of investment that means the original amount you paid original amount you paid to buy those shares for example you bought 30 percent shares you bought 30 percent shares so first of all you write coi then and this is the entry see i have solved with double entry as well this is the double entry this is the first entry so you bought the shares you made the entry debit investment credit cash now the second step what you will adjust you will adjust the post profits you will adjust the post profits of associate company you will adjust the post profits of associate company multiply by your share multiply by your share okay so let us say the post profits are 20000 multiplied by 30 percent is 6000 now before i tell you the entry this is the entry this is the entry huh? listen let me use some historical words Equity accounting is basically equity. What is equity accounting? In equity accounting, the other company's profits become becomes your income. The other company's profits becomes your income multiplied by your share. Your share you can book as an income. Why? Because you are invested. You are the owner. You are the thirty percent parent company. Is the thirty percent owner of associate company. Parent company is the thirty percent owner of the associate company. So that means the thirty percent profits the 30 percent profits of associate company belongs to parent company so parent company will simply will simply will simply book the 30 percent share in its pnl so what will be the entry see this is the entry let me make it with the numbers with the numbers i'm do, i'm going with the numbers so the entry will be debit 6000 and credit pnl or cr if it's if it is a pnl question then then P, if it is a soci question then pnl if this is SOFP question, then adjust it in CR. Now, third thing, few things, few things reduces the investment, few things reduces the investment. And what are those? Number one is impairment. Number one is impairment. What happens sometimes? What happens sometimes that because of losses, the value of this associate company goes down. The value of the associate companies goes down. So when when the value of associate company goes down, automatically the value of our investment will also go down. Automatically the value of our investment will also go down. So we'll reduce we'll reduce this we'll reduce this investment and what we'll make the entry debit CR and credit investment in associate debit CR and credit investment in associate. Now the third thing next thing dividends from associate dividends from associate what happened see this is p company this is a company and our holding is 30 percent now this is a technical thing but you have to use your brain no option what happens sometime a company gives dividends a company gives dividend for example a company has given dividend of 1000 this time so obviously parent company is the 30 percent owner parent company is the 30 percent owner of a company and a company has given total total dividends of 1000 please look at me a company has given total dividend of 1000 so out of this 1000 30 percent will go out of this 1000 30 percent will go to 30 percent will go to means 300 will go to parent company okay so now the question is will will parent company record it as a separate investment income should should parent company record should parent company record this 300 as a separate investment income the answer is no answer is no answer is no why because because parent company has already recorded parent company has already recorded the complete profit see parent company has already recorded the complete profit after tax Parent company has already recorded the complete profit after tax share in, in their own income. And you know, dividends are distributed from profit after tax. Dividends are distributed, are distributed from profit after tax. So that means this dividend income is already included here. See, 
this dividend income is already included in the parent company's PNL already already this has already been included in parent company's PNL. So if you book if you book this dividend income from a company as an income in the consolidated books, you will do double you will record income two times you will record income twice. That's why now you just have to make the entry debit bank and credit investment. You have to reduce the investment because you have already included included it in 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 this in this 6000 right and one more thing if there is a urp from p to a p to a you need to adjust that thing as well and finally you get carrying value of investment and associate and yes this carrying value of investment and associate is recorded on the non current as a non current asset as a non current asset in section in consolidated books don't forget non current asset section in consolidated books and one more important news this whole equity accounting is for consolidated books not individual books of b company this whole accounting which i taught you see this accounting this whole accounting which we are discussing right now is this equity accounting is for consolidated books not individual books is for consolidated books not individual books of p company don't forget this okay check the, check it out please check it out so now with associate in the balance sheet look at me in the balance sheet only one line adjustment in the asset side you write carrying you just have to write carrying value of investment and associate and these are the maximum things maximum thing which goes which goes in carrying value of investment and associate maximum things all things i've told you okay and in the consolidated balance sheet we have to adjust cr as well see this i made the entry cr here cr here so only two things whenever you get the question of associate and you have to make consolidated balance sheet look at here whenever you get the question of associate and you have to prepare consolidated balance sheet just two things keep in mind two things you have to do number one you have to calculate carrying value of investment and associate for asset side you have to calculate carrying value of investment in associate for asset side number one number two number two number two number two you have you have to number two you have to adjust cr where it is relevant you have to adjust cr where it is relevant okay now just a quick quick recap because we have to do questions as well quick because this is basically question based revision session but i have already given two hours for the th these things listen sometimes it happens p to a and a to a to p parent company sold goods to a company and a company sold goods to p company okay so what you have to do in that case first you look at the step first you have to calculate urp urp as normal urp as normal and then don't don't forget to multiply it with the holding percentage this is the key this is very key step hope you remember with subsidiary when you are dealing with subsidiary you adjust complete urp when you deal with your subsidiary you adjust complete urp that's final but when you deal with associate my dear boys and girls look at here when you deal with associate how, what amount you adjust you first calculate urp and then you multiply it with your holding percentage of associate and now this number this number you have to adjust this number you have to adjust don't forget okay so with p2a sale what is the entry of p2a sale the entry of p2a sale is consolidated reserve you have to reduce cr and you have to reduce investment investment and associate which we just discussed which we just discussed and when it is a to p sale when this is a to p a to p a to p then we do cr and group inventory because now because now the urp is included in parent company's inventory urp is included in parent company's inventory and we can we can we can adjust parent company's inventory easily because we are we are parent company okay 
So these are the entries, but the key is, but the, this is the key. This is the main error which students do. What's the error? What's the error? When you deal with subsidiary, adjust complete URP. Simple. But when you deal with associate, when you deal with associate, 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 then, then only one thing. URP multiply by your holding percentage and then it then post the entry then adjust it. Okay. Now simplified version of income statement in associate question. Normally in associate income statement questions, normally you will be given, you will be given three columns. You will be given three, three columns, parent company, subsidiary company and associate company, parent company, subsidiary company, and associate company. Very easy between these two, between parent and subsidiary, you do adding together between parent and subsidiary, you do adding together. That's it. You know that, but with associate never do adding together only one, one line adjustment again with associate, never ever do adding together only, only, only one line adjustment. That's it. Okay. So what's that one line adjustment? The name of that one line adjustment is associate share of profit, associate share of profit. And how do we calculate associate share of profit? Very easy, simple. A company's profit after tax, A company's profit after tax, multiply by your holding. A company's profit after tax, multiply by your holding. That's it. Okay. One more thing. One more thing. Be active. Sometime it happens that associate is only for uh, half of for half of the year. You have acquired associate in the mid of the year, and you have to calculate you have to adjust associate share in income statement. So as you know, income statement is always for the year. Income statement is always for the year. So don't forget, forget to apportion the profits of associate company for associate share of profit calculation. Okay. In that case, you need to apportion the profits. Please be careful. So first thing is this. Now, second thing, if if there is any, if there is some impairment of associate impairment of associate, that means that's definitely parent company's loss. So simply adjust this loss here, simply adjust that impairment of investment and associate loss here. So automatically your associate share of profit will go down. And when your associate share of profit will go down automatically, this will affect consolidated income statement. Then one more thing. If there is P to A or A to P, C, the same treatment now, according to the revised standard, same treatment for A to P and P to A in income statement. In income statement, now according to revised rules, A to P and P to A, same treatment. Just adjust, just deduct the URP adjustment, URP adjustment here. And this final is one line adjustment. Add, let me write, add this in consolidated SOCI after gross profit after that's it. See this will it let me make the walls. This is a one window. Wait, sorry. This associate share of profit is a one window thing. Just compute it and adjust it in as a one line, as a one line, as a one line in consolidated income statement. That's it. That's it. That's it. And one more thing I told you, if it is P to A or A to P, P to A or A to P in income statement, according to new rules, new latest rules, it's simply, simply adjusted. It's simply adjusted, simply adjusted in associate share of profit. But don't forget, don't adjust the complete URP. Do, don't adjust the complete URP. Only URP multiply by your holding percentage. Okay. I already told you. See this. URP for associate, URP multiply by your holding percentage. Not just complete URP. Yes, with the subsidiary thing. With the subsidiary thing, we can adjust complete URP. We can adjust complete URP. Okay. But with the associate thing, never. First apply holding percentage on URP and then do it.
Look at look at the screen. Look at the screen, please. Now, this is a, a little quick theory, IFRS 10 and IFRS 3. Uh, the name of IFRS 10 is Consolidated Financial Statement, whereas IFRS 3 is Business Combination. What's the role of IFRS 10 and IFRS 3? Short review. IFRS 10, IFRS 10 tells you that whether you have control in this subsidiary or not. IFRS 10 tells you whether you have control in that subsidiary or not. If you have control, if I have, if I have a stand gives you green signal, yes, you have control, then go ahead with the consolidation, go ahead with the consolidation, whatever we discussed and how you will do practical consolidation, how you will do that practical consolidation. That thing will be taught by IFRS three. That is IFRS three. IFRS 3 tells you how to do practical consolidation, how to do fair value adjustment, how to do P2S, S2P and everything, whatever, whatever fair value adjustment, everything we have discussed. Okay. So the difference is IFRS 10, IFRS 10 tells you whether you have control in that company or not. Okay. And once you got the message, yes, we have control now whole whole practical consolidation is discussed in IFRS 3 business combination. Now, this is the definition of control just just for your convenience. Just have a look. When you have when investor has control in investment, when, when you have power over investment, you have rights to or exposure of variable returns and you have the current ability to exercise power through your inv involvement. And I hope you remember, I hope you remember this thing. Control normally comes with 50% plus holding. Control normally comes with 50% plus holding. This is the normal rule. But in the theory sections, all teachers teaches this thing that sometimes control comes with less than 50% holding. Exceptions, exceptions. Do revise it as well. Do revise these exceptions. How? Sometimes control comes with less than 50% shares through contractual arrangements. Through contractual arrangements. Sometimes you get you get the power to appoint some time parent company get the power to appoint majority of directors of S company without 50% holding. Yes, if that is the case, then you don't need the holding percentage control is there. So the real thing is not holding percentage. Real thing is control. Yeah, real thing is not holding percentage. Real thing is control. Real thing is control. Yes, I'll give you a, a break shortly. One student is asking about the break. Yes, I'll give you. I know. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll give you a break. And then after the break, we'll start directly to the question. We'll go to the question bank. Now, there is a case which sometimes comes in exam and it is present in pyramid or some questions. And this is a goods in transit, goods in transit case, goods in transit case C. For example, in the adjustment it is given in the, this is a kid, this is the exam kit question as well. In the exam, in the question it is given, parent company's record says that parent company has done sales to S company. Parent company has done total sales to S company of 15,000. Parent company has sold goods to S company for 15,000. But S company record says that we have only bought goods of 13,500. S company record says that we have only bought goods of 13,500. That means there is some goods, there is some goods which are in transit. What does it mean? Just assume it that on the last day of accounting period, period parent company loaded a truck, parent company loaded a truck with goods and they, the, the truck is going on the way. Okay. So that truck is in transit. That truck is in air. Okay. So now when these goods are in transit, you know, this thing, whatever is in transit, you have to take it to the destination. You have to take it to the other destination. So now when these goods will arrive to S company, just use, use your brain. 
when these goods which are in transit which are in transit but will arise will will reach s company we need to make this entry see this we make we make entry goods in transit goods in transit or some people write it g g i t g i t goods in transit debit 1500 and payable s companies payable credits 1500 first entry what we have to make goods in transit debit 1500 and payable credit 1500 goods in transit debit 1500 and payable credit 1500 okay so now wait now first of all first of all adjust this entry how you will adjust this entry you will go in the s you will go in the s company's balance sheet look at here you will go in the s company's balance sheet and you will increase you will increase inventory by 1500 you will increase s company's inventory by 1500 and s company's payable by 1500 first of all adjust first of all adjust this entry you will go in the s company's balance sheet you will increase you will increase s companies s companies look at here s companies inventory by 1500 and s companies payable by 1500 now this is first thing now use your brain second thing just think just just read this line read this line as as these goods as these goods have not reached s company by the year end as these goods have not reached s company by the year end so of definitely these goods are not yet been sold to third party by the year end first s company will receive then s company will transfer to somebody else think over it so as these goods have not reached s company by the year end so how is it possible that these goods are sold so definitely these goods contain urp whatever profit whatever profit is included in this, these goods are total urp are total urp so you need to calculate urp and you need to adjust you need to calculate urp and you need to adjust and now as this is p2s sale as this is p2s sale you know the rules of urp for p2s sale let me make the entry here let me make the entry here what's the entry the entry let us say urp is 500 let us say let assuming assuming urp is 500 so we'll make the entry cr debit and group inventory credit cr debit and group inventory credit okay that's how we work that's how we work with goods in transit things that's how we work when with goods in transit things first of all adjust this entry this is the first entry which you have to adjust and this is the second and you know the entries are not mandatory if you don't need if you don't want to make entry for urp no need if you don't want to make entry for urp no need at all right ignore it no need just simply direct adjust directly adjust cr and group inventory mm -hmm. Okay, now let's take let's take a short break. Say five to five minutes break. Five minutes break. Just refresh yourself, and then we'll start. Then we'll start the question thing. Okay, right? Five minutes break. Uh, let's start the class. Let's start the class. Let's start the class. Uh, we are going to do the first question. We are going to do the first question uh, that is that relates to income statement. Uh, I have originally planned to solve two questions with you. Let's see. Now, and this is the latest past paper. If you go to the net, you will find this question. This is the latest, latest past paper, latest past paper. Okay. Uh, I can share the question with you. I can share the question with you. Wait. On the group.
yes i have sent you if you want to see the question on your on your screen you i have already sent you okay now if you want to take the picture from here you can take no issue but the question is visible here now time is important please let's start this scenario relates to two requirements there are two requirements of this scenario we are going to do the first one plank company come on come on be very active be very active please we this this should be the two way traffic not just energy from my side but from your side as well okay it should be two way traffic then you will understand please don't lose your hope you have to clear you have to clear this paper in this attempt okay and this is possible you have already enjoyed a lot in corona you have taken big leaps please now plank has owned 35% 35% means this is associate this is associate this 35% is associate this 35% is associate okay since first june x7 biggest dodge biggest this is called dodge this is called dodge see what's your year end just see our year end is 31st december x8 8 not 7 not 7 our year end is 31st december x8 and we bought this company in x7 so that means one and a half years one more than one and a half year so that means that means for the december 2008 year for the december 2000 x8 year this company is yours for the whole year not getting this is the dodge you know after looking at june date what students do they start apportion it they start apportioning the profit of associate for associate share of profit don't do it in income statement you have to make you have to prepare soci for always for the year for the whole year and in december x8 your year is december x8 for the year ended december x8 this associate is with you for the whole year for the whole year so complete complete profit see this is this is this is the profit after tax this is the profit after tax of a company for in order to compute in order to compute in order to compute associate share of profit i'll use this complete profit after tax okay don't worry now and it acquired now it acquired 85 percent of the strip company obviously this is subsidiary on yes this date on 1st april x8 on 1st april x8 please 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 give me give me time give me time and energy look at here i need your attention now yes subsidiary is acquired on the midway of december of the year end for the year ended december x8 that means from 1st april to 31st december x8 so from 1st april to 31st december x8 subsidiary is only with us subsidiary is only with us for only nine months so for see this this as sub for this subsidiary company we need to do nine upon 12. for this subsidiary company we need to do nine by 12 don't forget my dear boys and girls okay i need one thing first of all are you getting the last two hours did you understand anything please write on the uh, chat please at least this is my right write on the chat i need i need to listen i need to see did you understand things please all of you just one one text this is my tip one text is my tip okay okay thank you thank you thanks thanks please now concentrate again so with parent companies yours for the whole year in all questions parent companies data will come all all complete complete but subsidy for 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 subsidiary for subsidiary company you have to do 9 upon 12 because this is income statement question and you just check the date okay and for associate complete year for associate complete year okay wait azan just one minute break azan
now okay so parent companies data will come complete and as companies 9.12 and associate companies definitely full year because we we bought the shares of associate company last year now just one request i'll also solve everything with you don't worry but keep a calculator with you so that you can do things you can verify things immediately okay now a fair value a fair value you know when parent company when parent company acquires when parent company acquires subsidiary company parent company parent company accountant does fair value adjustment okay if something is not at fair value a fair value excise conducted on 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 first april x8 concluded that the carrying amount of strip means as company companies net assets were equal to their fair values with the exception with the exception of an item of machinery which had a fair value of 8 million in excess of its carrying amount in excess of its carrying amount in excess of its carrying amount right so a blind man a blind student can say sir this is upward this is upward fair value adjustment this is upward fair value adjustment okay so we know any fair value adjustment won't come in the income statement but yes the depreciation thing the depreciation thing will affect the depreciation thing will affect consolidated income statement we just discussed at first april x8 the machinery had a remaining 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 life of 3 years depreciation is charged to cost of sales easy peasy very easy don't don't worry how you will calculate the extra depreciation 8000 8000 is the is the revaluation amount divided by first of all calculate the per year depreciation divide by 3 years if you divide it by 3 years see just think in the denominator it's it's years in the denominator it's years so your answer will be in per year your answer will come in per annum per annum and then finally multiply it with 9 upon 12 because in this question there is a gap of only 9 months there is a gap of only 9 months from 1st april to 31st december so only 9 months depreciation issue which you have to adjust so this 8000 8000 can you write in the chat box so somebody can 8000 divided by 3 times 9 upon 12 8000 divided by 3 times 9 upon 12 is the excess depreciation 2000 yes the number is 2000 this 2000 this 2000 okay thank you this 2000 will be adjusted in consolidated cost of sales how as this is upward fair value adjustment so we will add we will add this 2000 in consolidated cost of sales we will add this 2000 in consolidated cost of sales and also this 2000 will be deducted from s company's profit after tax in the calculation of nci this this 2000 will be deducted from s company's profit after tax in the calculation of nci why i told you because this this is the s company issue this is the s company issue and s company issues always hit two the two way two at two places s company's issues always hit the consolidated income statement as well as nci as well as nci see this is the practical implication okay now second now you have p to s and p to a sale p to s and p to a sale again this is routine marks this is routine marks this see this is latest past paper go and check on the net a net i think it's 2020 or latest 2019 paper very latest paper since acquisition plank company has sold goods to strip company totaling 39 million okay apply the first step and this is the goods goods means inventory p to s sale of inventory p to s sale of inventory the first step the sale is 39 million this 39 million this 39 million means 39000 will be deducted will be deducted from sales and cost of sales both this 39000 will be deducted from consolidated sales and consolidated cost of sales don't forget be active be active don't sleep please 
Now let's see, is there any URP? Yes. A strip company had one quarter, one quarter, one upon four, one quarter means one upon four of these goods in inventory at 31st December X8. Yes. Now stop here. Stop here. How do we calculate URP? How do we calculate URP? How do we calculate URP? Very simple. First calculate the total profit. First calculate the total profit of this transaction and then multiply it by one upon four, the unsold percentage, the unsold percentage of inventory, you will get URP in seconds. Now, for that, you need to see the markup and margin, markup and margin. Wait, 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 wait. All of these goods had a markup, 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 markup. Now, please don't expect that I'll teach you markup and margin here. You are old guys. You, you are with beard. Please, you are old guys. So all these goods are, are had a markup on cost of 30%. And this is, see this 39 million is the selling price. This 39 million is the selling price. So just, just for your understanding in markup cost is always hundred percent. And when you add 30% in the cost, so the selling price is equal to 130 selling price is equal to 130, 130. Okay. So now how will you calculate the total profit? Just 39 million, right? Like, like this, see 39,000 divided by 130 times 30, 39,000 divided by 130 times 30, 39,000 divided by 130 times 30. This is your total profit is I think 9,000. Somebody told me total profit is 9,000, 9,000. Okay. And now how much goods are unsold one upon four. So 9,000 times one upon four, I think two, two, five, zero is your URP. 2250 is your URP. 9000 times 1 upon 4, 2250 is your URP. Okay. So, in short, as this is a P2S sale, so only two steps in income statement. Don't, don't worry, don't worry, relax. As this is P2S sale, only two steps in the income statement. The first step, the first step is, the first step is 39,000 should be deducted from consolidated sales and consolidated cost of sales. And the second step, this URP of 2250, this URP of 2250 will be added, will be added in consolidated cost of sales. That's it. That's it. That's it. Done. Wait. Now, next, there is one P2A sale, which is easy. During the year, Plank company also sold goods to Arsh company, definitely the associate for 26 million. This is the sales amount of which, of which, all of which, all of which, all, all of which our company held in the inventory. So 100% goods are with the associate company. So the complete profit, complete total profit is URP. Now, in this case, the complete total profit is URP. Wait, so wait, wait, wait. Well, how do we calculate profit now? You know the rules of markup 26,000 divided by 130 into 30. This is your complete URP 26,000 divided by 130 into 30. Do it 2100. This is your URP. Now, now a dodge. This arch company is your associate. This arch company is your associate. I told you today, I focused you. Even I changed the pitch of my voice when I was teaching you this topic. Listen, listen. In the case of associate, you need to multiply URP with your holding percentage. Before adjusting associate URP, always, 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 always multiply always multiply you are, uh, I think holding is 30% weight. Let me check. Sorry. Holding is no holding is 35%. Holding is 35. So 2100 times 35% is how much? 2100 times 35% is 1800. Okay. So this 1800 will adjust and how do we adjust one step in income statement? either it is P2A or A to P in income statement, either it is P2A or A to P simply deduct this, this amount from associate share of profit. 
इन इनकम स्टेटमेंट इज पी टू ए और ए टू पी पी टू ए और ए टू पी सिंपली डिडक्ट दिस अमाउंट ऑफ एटीन हंड्रेड फ्रॉम असोसिएट शेयर ऑफ प्रॉफिट प्लीज लिसन द क्वेश्चन वेरी केयरफुली वाई यू आर सेंग दोटल यू आर पी समी सेंग टोटल यू आर पी सिक्स थाउजेंड समी ट्वेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड यस वेट ट्वेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड डिवाइड बाई वन थर्टीन टू थर्टी हाउ मच इज दिस ओ हो दिस इज सिक्स थाउजेंड सॉरी समबडी रोट रॉन्ग अमाउंट एंड आई कॉपीड इट आई गॉट द पॉइंट नाउ वेट वेट यस This is six thousand times thirty-five percent. Twenty-one hundred is your amount of adjustment. Twenty. I got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you, boys. Twenty-one hundred is the amount of adjustment which you need to you need to deduct. You need to deduct from associate share of profit, which you need to deduct from associate share of profit. Profit, please. Okay. Next. Next. The investment income of Plank. The investment income of Plank for the year ended thirty first December X eight. Now, uh, you have the question. You can check it at a, in your WhatsApp as well, and I'll show you the question as well. There is some invest. There is some investment income with pay parent company books in the P company books. Includes dividends. Oh ho oh, ho oh, ho. Oh. See. include dividends from strip and arc it also includes 5 million interest receivable on a loan made to strip company on 1st april x8 now this is very technical transaction wait obviously we'll remove the dividends don't worry we'll remove the inter company dividends definitely but first let's let's fix this interest income and just assume just think Parent company acquired S company on first April, not first January. Parent company acquired a so subsidiary company on first April, not first January. So this is a the the uh, the takeover period. The the post period is only nine months. The post period after takeover is nine months. Okay, and parent company has given parent company has given loan to parent company has given loan to S company. on the same date see 1st april so that means this 5 million this 5 million interest belongs to only 9 months last 9 months last 9 months not getting as parent company has given loan to s company on 1st april so s company has used the loan loan for last 9 months s company has used the loan for last 9 months and they are openly they are openly saying that this 5 million in uh, interest income relates to that loan which which made on 1st april so this is ready made 5 million income of last 9 months so we now we don't need to apportion it don't apportion this interest income and expense no need to apportion no need to apportion this 5 million this is ready made last 9 months number so this 5 million you have to cancel out yes this 5 million you have to remove you have to remove from parent company's interest income and s company's interest expense from parent company's investment income and s company's interest expense let me do it for you see this 5000 you need to subtract from here and from here okay this is totally inter company thing this is a total inter company thing yes and out of this 14000 see this finance cost Out of this fourteen thousand, five thousand is intercompany, and that five thousand belongs to last nine months. So purely, simply remove it, and then the remaining seven thousand will be up, will be apportioned. Seven thousand you have to do apportionment of nine upon twelve before doing adding together, before doing adding together in the income statement, before doing adding together in the income statement. You have to do fourteen thousand minus five thousand into nine upon twelve. Yes, one question, sir. How can you say that the remaining seven thousand, the remain see sorry nine thousand, 
14 minus 5 14 minus 5 the remaining 9000 belongs to belongs to 12 months the remaining 9000 because it is written in the question all items all items for which examiner is silent are assumed to be are assumed to accrue evenly over the year so we need to apportion but for this 5000 but for this 5000 examiner has openly told us examiner has openly told us please listen that this loan that this loan was generated see this loan was generated on 1st of april x8 this loan was generated on 1st of april x8 see this is the evidence this is the evidence okay so we need to cancel it out second thing second thing now this investment income includes the dividends now a strip company paid dividend to shareholders to shareholders means all shareholders of 18 million c this is p this is s this is p this is s our holding is 85 percent and s company has given total dividends total dividends of 18 million so can you tell me how many dividends will come to our home how many dividends will come to our home tell me 18 million times 85 percent 18 million times 85 percent see 18 million times 85 percent will come to parent companies 15,300 yes this 15,300 we have booked this 15,300 we have booked in our, our investment income which we need to cancel up cancel it out because of intercompany thing okay so don't forget don't forget to remove this 15 1 5 3 double 0 from investment income one more dividend arch company arch company paid a dividend of uh, for on 31st december x8 of 35 million now see we are p company and we have 35 percent shares of a company now you tell me how much total dividends are paid are paid by arch company this is 35 million how much how much we are going to receive how much we are going to receive from this 35 million just multiply this 35000 into 35% just multiply this 35000 times 35% i think the number is 12 12 to 12 250 12250 12250 okay now look at me are we allowed to record this 12250 as 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 an investment income are we are we allowed please look at me are we allowed to record this 12250 as an investment income in consolidated books the answer is no no for associate no because you have already we have already recorded associate share of profit we have already recorded associate share of profit using pat using profit after tax of a company and these dividends are already included these dividends are already included so we have to remove now we have to remove from investment income these dividends are already included these dividends are already included as part of associate share of profit as part of associate share of profit so now we need to remove this 12250 as well so how, how how many numbers we have to remove c from this we will also remove c 12250 and how much for how much for parent uh, subsidiary dividend i think 15300 c from 46000 you have to remove 12250 5000 and 15300 okay right this is the intercompany cancellation cash marks cash marks your concept must be cleared now and can you tell me s company has investment income of 2000 we'll only simply do 9 upon 12 with this 2000 okay no cancellation with this 2000 look at the screen the s companies s companies investment income no need to cancel simply 9 upon 12 simply 9 upon 12 with this s companies investment income okay this is pure s companies normal income but yes s company is only with us for nine months so we need to do up we need to apportion everything now one more thing 
can you see can you see some oci oci do you remember oci the revolution gain oci oci gain on this is parent company the oci and this is subsidiary company oci now one thing comes in the mind of students sir parent company is with us we are the owner of parent company so for the we always take complete year things of parent company in income statement we always take complete data of parent company so complete but see this s company oci s company s company was taken over at 1st april so only 9 months s company was taken over on 1st april so only 9 months so a student may think a student may think to apportion a student may think to apportion this 3000 by 9 upon 12 a student may think wait a student may think to apportion this 3000 by 9 upon 12 but there is something written in note number 5 or note number 6 there is there is something written in note number 5 or 6 wait 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 this is english see note number 6 note all other all other comprehensive income means oci all oci occurred occurred after 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 first april x8 after so this revaluation gain belongs to pure 9 months this revaluation gain of 3000 belongs to pure last 9 months belongs to pure pure last 9 months so no need to apportion just take complete 2800 and complete 3000 in all calculation just take complete 2800 and complete 3000 in all calculation okay now there is one note number 5 which is related to requirement 2 requirement 2 requirement number 2 there is one what in the cons as as we acquired the associate last year you are not getting hope you remember the date i highlighted i highlighted the date we acquired the associate last year we bought the shares of associate last year so at the beginning of this year associate was must be must be in our sofp associate carrying value must be in our sofp in the last year balance sheet see note number 5 in planks consolidated its statement of financial position at 31st december x7 last year the carrying amount of planks investment in art was 145000 you can just you for your easiness sorry for your easiness you can come assume it coi this assume it as a coi 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 for associate this is cost of investment for associate for your easiness okay this was calculated using equity accounting and this note number 5 is related to point of requirement number b this is requirement number b okay but let's let's forget it now let's forget it now it's only two marks see requirement b is two marks requirement a is 18 marks be a good businessman be a good businessman during exams go for big marks 18 marks is major if you if you do mistake even even right now during this class if you don't understand two marks no issue 18 marks is the real thing you are not getting if somebody has problem with these two marks throw it away throw it away this two marks give charity i i often say do charity of two marks do charity with examiner no issue you need 50 marks to clear you, there are two there are two there are two columns only pass fail you have to cross the 50 marks barrier that's it so don't worry about two marks one mark no issue no issue as long as you cross the 50 marks border you are you are excellent you are the best not getting so if if somebody has difficulty in two marks no issue no issue at all try to try to do like this try to think like this okay now uh finally can anybody tell me see uh, one more thing for income statement we need to calculate one more thing for income statement we need to calculate that is associate share of profit that is associate share of profit and for that i will pick this a company patc this a company pat that is 92570 92570 multiply by 35% 92570 
multiply by 35%, multiply by 35%. Multiply by 35%, 92570, multiply by 35%, okay? And yes, I will also adjust the URP. I will also adjust the URP and associate share of profit. I taught you the 2100, the 2100 thing, don't worry, okay? So that was all, wait, wait, wait. That was all the questions intro. Now I will shift my screen to Excel. Now I will shift my screen to Excel, okay? Right. So now the question, maybe I won't show you the question. I have the question with me. I have the question with me to, to write the figures. Okay. To type the figures, but for you guys, I have already sent you the question. You can see that, or you can just trust on me. Right. Okay. So let's move to the solution thing. Okay, dear students, dear students, dear students, uh, I have just because as these are revision days, as these are revision days, I have written the unnecessary typing I've already done. The objective of this session is not to teach you how to write the revenue R E V E. No, 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 no. How to type cost of sales. No, not this is not the objective. Okay. The objective is the revision. Okay. Giving you the concept. Now, if we start with revenue numbers, if, if we start with revenue C, I, for consolidated income statement, look at here, look at here. First of all, there are three companies in this show, parent company, subsidiary and associate, parent, subsidiary and associate, parent, subsidiary and associate. Uh, is everything clear? Is the screen, is screen is perfect in front of you? Just, just one, one text. Is the screen is perfect? The Excel screen. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, so there are three companies, parent, subsidiary and associate. Just ignore associate for, for few minutes because we don't include associate in adding together only parent and subsidiary. Okay. And with parent and subsidiary, with parent and subsidiary, parent company, full year and subsidiary company, only nine months, only nine months because of acquisition date. Hope you remember. So now, let me let me do sales let me calculate sales revenue i have started calculated the revenue number equal to parent c <coughs> parent company revenue is 705 000 705 000 plus c shift plus bracket open subsidiary revenue is 218 218000 0, 0 times 9 upon 12. Now, boys and girls, instead of writing 9 upon 12, we can write 0. 0.75. Instead of writing 9 upon 12, we can write 0. 0.75. That's also fine. So let me do 0. 0.75. See, 0. 0.75. Bracket close. Now, do you remember the P2S sale? Do you remember the P2S sale of 39,000? Do you remember the P2S sale of 39,000? Yes or no? So we need to remove that P2S. We need to remove, we need to remove that P2S sale from sales and cost of sales. So let's subtract 39 million. Okay. So this is eight. See, this is eight, nine, two. Let me wait. Let me uh, highlight, increase the screen, okay? And let me wait, 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 wait. Switch off the camera. I'm switching off the camera for some time because I need to show you the full screen. 
Now, listen. So this is sales revenue. See, the formula is already there. Parent company sales plus subsidiary company sales times nine upon twelve. Nine upon twelve is point seven five, and then we remove how much thirty nine thousand that inter company sales. Now, for cost of sales, for cost of sales working, what I am doing? Cost of sales, I am doing working separate working. I am doing separate working, and still listen. You guys are allowed. You guys are allowed to do it in the same same format. You can do it in the main format as well. So now. Cost of sales. What is parent company's cost of sales? Parent company's cost of sales is three twenty thousand. Parent company's cost of sales is three twenty thousand. C. Three twenty thousand is the parent company's cost of sales. Subsidiary company cost of sales is eighty one thousand. But you know, thus we have to apportion the subsidiary company cost of sales. That is nine upon twelve. So, how we'll do it? That is eighty one thousand. Eighty one thousand. Times times nine upon twelve or point seven five, whichever looks good to you. Eighty one thousand times nine upon twelve. See, so this is then. After that, we have to remove intercompany purchases. You know, thirty nine thousand. Thirty nine thousand we remove. Thirty nine thousand we remove from sales. So obviously, from cost of sales, we need to remove the same amount. So thirty nine thousand. Okay, now. hope you remember the urp thing urp we need to add we need to add urp we need to add urp how much was the urp how much was the urp i think i think urp was urp was how much wait 2250 yes urp was 2250 you can directly write it you can directly write it you can directly write it you can directly write urp or you can calculate it as well see 39000 sorry 39000 times how much into 30 upon 130 into shift 30 divided by 130 okay and Times one upon four means times point two five times point two five. Your see this, see this. I taught you URP calculation on the other screen. Two two five zero is the URP. Okay. Now, hope you remember the upward fair value adjustment. Hope you remember the upward, upward, upward fair value adjustment excess depreciation. Upward fair value adjustment excess depreciation. How to calculate? It's eight thousand divided by three. Sorry, divided by three. Okay, this is per year depreciation times times nine months is point seven five. Nine months means point seven five two thousand. Okay, right. So. these are these are your cost of sales these are your cost of sales okay okay wait something in the chat box okay good so let's calculate the cost of sales it's 346000 the cost of sales is 346000 right now what we have to do we have we have to write this cost of sales in that column but we, i am giving you just 30 seconds just to analyze it urp i have see this urp formula i have already taught you urp somebody is asking about the urp urp i have already taught on the other page So for URP, listen. For URP, first calculate the total profit. For URP, first calculate the total profit and then multiply it by one upon four, the unsold amount. Okay. Now, this three forty six thousand. This three four six thousand is your cost of sales. Let's take this. cost of sales in the main format
Now let's connect it. Let's connect it three forty six thousand. Okay. So see this. See the screen, please. Your sales is eight to nine five hundred. Your cost of sales is three forty six thousand. Your cost of sales is three forty six thousand. Okay. So how we do it now? Let's calculate the gross profit. Let's calculate the gross profit. Wait. This is four eight three five hundred. Okay. Now, very simple. We need to adjust. You need to adjust associate share of profit. Associate, associate share of share of profit. Wait. Let's do some working for this. Let's do some working for this. Wait. How to calculate associate share of profit, boys and girls? How to calculate associate share of profit? Simple. You have to calculate it for the whole year, whole, whole, complete year. How? A companies, A companies profit. A companies, listen. A companies profit. A companies profit after tax multiply by your holding percentage. A companies profit after tax multiply by your holding. percentage okay you remember a companies profit after tax multiply by your holding percentage what's the a companies profit after tax it's 92570 come on come on come on quick let me write it's 92 92750 92750 times 35% times how much percentage 35% point 35 times point 35 This is your three to four six point two five, three four six point three. It's nine two five seven zero. Sorry, sorry, my mistake. I've written wrong number. Wait, nine two five seven zero. Sorry, times how much? Point three five. Okay, three two three triple nine. right now how to add how much was the urp you can do direct you can directly write the urp no issue how much was the urp adjustment it was 2100 you remember i taught you 2100 adjustment okay come on here you go this is your this is your associate share associate share of profit 302999.5 302 Double nine point five associate share of profit. Okay. Associate share of profit calculation. I already taught you. I already cal. I already taught you associate share profit calculation. In the case of associate, in this question, the total profit will be URP. The total profit because all the goods are unsold. All the goods are. unsold so complete profit is urp for associate but in the end in the end you have to multiply it by 35% okay now let's connect it with here associate share of profit wait equal wait 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 let me connect this is okay this is associate share of profit now for distribution cost distribution cost it's very simple distribution cost parent company's complete share equal to how much parent company's is 58000 and subsidiary company's 16000 into 9 upon 12 So simply do it minus fifty eight. I'm I have to use negative fifty eight thousand, and if you if you multiply it is sixteen thousand by nine upon twelve, so it's nine thousand. Okay, so this becomes sixty seven thousand. And admin expenses now ninety two. Okay. 
and then 28,000 times 9 upon 12, that is 21,000. It's 113. Now, investment income. This is very important. Investment income. Please, now you don't need to sleep. I, I already, I already, I already told you, I already told you, listen about the investment income. The investment income here is 46,000, 46,000, right? Then minus first do intercompanies cancellation. First do intercompanies calculation. Listen, listen, listen. 5,000 interest income we have to remove. 5,000 interest income we have to remove. Listen, listen. Then I think you can directly calculate the dividends. No need to show dividend working. 5,000 is, 5, is the interest income. And then dividends, let's let's do dividend income. No, no problem. 18,000 subsidiary, 18,000 times 0.85. You remember subsidiary dividend. See, I have removed subsidiary dividend. Then, then associate dividend was, I think, 35,000. Associate dividend was, I think, 35,000, 35,000 times how much? 30, wait. Yes, 35,000 times 35%. Bracket open. 35,000 times, times, times point, sorry, point 0.35. See, we have removed associate dividends as well. I have, I have done as I have done some mistake in the distribution cost. I'll correct it. Wait, I'll correct it. I've done a little mistake, I think. Yes, in distribution cost. 58 plus 12 is 70. They will, we'll correct it. Don't, don't worry. I've seen. Then, see these all intercompanies cancellation is in front of you. And finally, finally, we have to add. Finally, we have to add the subsidiary part. You Did you see the subsidiary? I think there was, I think there was, I think there was, there was some subsidiary there was some investment income in the books of subsidiary. There was some investment income in the books of subsidiary. You remember? There was some investment income in the books of subsidiary 2000. Yes, we'll take nine upon 12. We'll take nine upon 12 of that as well. So 2000 into nine upon 12 means 0 0.75. Nine upon 12 means 0 0.75. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here you go. Now, I'm not pressing enter right now. You first see this formula. See, 46,000. I just removed the interest income, intercompany interest income. Then both dividends I have removed. Both dividends I have removed. Both dividends I have removed. Right? And then I have added 75%. I have added 75% of subsidiary investment income. It's 14950. It's 14950. Okay. Let me correct the distribution cost. There is a little error. Yes. 58,000 minus how much? It was 12,000. Sorry. Yes. Now, now the distribution cost is correct. You can check. There was there was an a little error. There was a little error in distribution cost. One student is asking about the two thousand point. Wait, let me show you. I have I have two thousand as well. See this. See this. Look at here. See there is I have I I have shown you I have shown you I have shown you the question. See, there is an investment income. See, there is an investment income of 2000 in, in a strip company's book. So definitely we will apportion it nine months, only nine months adding together. I hope, I hope the guy who asked the question, who he got the answer. Okay. 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 Now, now then finance cost, finance cost. See parent company's finance cost is 12,000. Parent company's finance cost is 12,000 and S company's finance cost is 14,000. This is for the whole year. Wait, 
but there is one 5000 5000 intercompany already included in it there is one 5000 intercompany already included in it and that we need to remove it and that 5000 belongs to pure nine months so without apportionment without apportionment remove that 5000 so if you remove 5000 from 14000 then remaining remaining 9000 belongs to whole year remaining 9000 finance cost of s company belongs to whole year and then you have to apportion that 9000 times 9 upon 12 9000 9 up, times 9 upon 12 so repeat parent companies 12000 finance cost will go as it is and subsidiary companies 14,000 finance cost. First, we'll remove the intercompany cancellation of 5,000. And then we'll do, then we will do apportionment of 9,000 times 9 upon 12. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. No issue. Equal minus. How much? 12,000 for parent company, then minus brackets. How much? I think 14, uh, 14 minus 5, 14 minus 5. M make it 9,000 direct, make it 9,000 direct. Times 9 upon 12 means 0 0.75, 9 upon 12 means 0 0.75, okay? I'm using negative signs because I need finance cost as a negative number. I want finance cost as a negative number. That's why. Okay. So what's the answer? It's 18750. It's 18750. Let me show you the formula. Let me show you the formula C. 18750. 18750. Okay. Yes, 5,000 was for nine months. 5,000 was for nine months. So I simply removed it. I simply removed it. 5,000. That is intercompany. And then that 9,000 was for 12 months. Was complete for 12 months. Okay. And this, this I have issue with the solution as well. I have, I have this conflict with the solution as well. Now, let's calculate, let's, let's simply calculate the profit before tax. Let's simply calculate the profit before tax. From GP. Wait, see, this is GP and I'm see, this is GP and we have to add all these numbers. See. This is GP and we have to add all these numbers. So three, two, six, something, right? Now income tax, income tax is very simple. Parent companies, income tax complete and subsidiary parent companies complete income tax. This is how much? 51,500, 51, 51, 500. And then, then, then subsidiary companies, subsidiary companies, nine upon 12. So subsidiary companies income tax is 15,000. Times nine upon twelve means point point seven five. See. This is your, this is your profit for the year. Can you see the text? Okay. So this is the complete. Okay.
now we have done the now now let's do let's do let's add oci how we do it listen the way the way we are adding together the whole parent and subsidiary income statement the way, the way we add together the whole parent and subsidiary data we do the same for oci we do the same for oci now what's the oci what's the oci for parent company it's 2800 what's the oci for parent company it's 2800 and what's the oci look at here what's the oci what's the oci what's the oci for subsidiary it's 3000 and it's already ready made for last 9 months it's already ready made for last 9 months so simply 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 what we'll do simply we'll add 3000 in it we'll add 3 <coughs> see this 2800 plus 3000 2800 plus 3000 okay so this is 5800 now let's calculate total comprehensive income let's calculate total comprehensive income total comprehensive income is profit after tax plus oci profit after tax plus oci here you go this is your total comprehensive income now we have done we have done we have done the income statement complete but hope you remember now you have to write three lines two times now you have to write three lines three lines the profit distributable lines two times one first of all you have to do it for profit first of all you have to do it for profit okay first of all you have to do it for profit and then you have to show the break up for total comprehensive income i am giving you 30 seconds to 1 minute to analyze it 30 seconds to or 1 minute to analyze it okay okay one question somebody asked what about the fair value adjustment fair value adjustment it's already cancelled out it's already cancelled out because fair value adjustment is the acquisition date thing it never comes in income statement fair value adjustment never comes in income statement don't forget yes the depreciation we adjust now now we have to calculate listen please little energy we have to calculate nci for income statement we have to calculate in nci for income statement using profit using profit okay let's start let's start let's start see look at here do you have please please we need energy now uh as income statement is a for the year thing as income statement is a for the year thing that's why that's why the income statement nci is also for the year thing so subsidiary company was with us for only 9 months subsidiary company was with us for only how many months 9 months okay so what we'll do we'll we'll simply apportion it we'll simply simply apportion the s company's profit after tax s company's profit after tax times 9 upon 12 so what is the s company's profit after tax is is it's it's 66000 let's do it 66000 times 9 upon 12 is simply 0.75 okay so this is your apportion profit now few things few things market which you need to adjust first of all just a reminder was there any s2p sale was there any s2p sale in this question no no was there any full goodwill full goodwill full goodwill method impairment no was there any excess deposition yes in this question there was an excess deposition which we have to adjust it these three are the normal checkpoints number 1 any s2p sale no any full goodwill method impairment no number 3 any excess depreciation yes upward fair value adjust upward fair value adjustment excess depreciation was there upward fair value adjustment excess depreciation was there 
so yes we need to subtract it and that was 2000 that was 2000 my dear i i calculated it for you okay so here you have here you have the profit okay see the adjusted number is the adjust oh sorry the adjusted number is sorry wait forty seven five hundred okay so this is the adjusted as company's profit after tax first of all first of all i'm calculating nci using c using profit nci using profit c what is the formula simply this 47500 please please look at me this 47500 times times your times your holding percentage times nca holding percentage and in this question our holding percentage was 85 percent our holding percentage was 85 percent so nca holding is 15 percent so simply see 47500 highlighted times 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 point one five times point one five here you go you have seven one two five you have seven one two five seven one two five as an nci you have seven one two five as an nci this nci is calculated using the profit number okay now hope hope you have done something for f7 something in f7 now nci for total comprehensive income this is one more thing see it in your exam kit in your exam kit you might you might have done the questions like like uh what's the name prodigal prodigal these, these things already you did in prodigal and all these now this is nci for profit this is nci for profit now nci for total comprehensive income how do we calculate just a final account thing just a final account thing how do we calculate total comprehensive income how do we calculate total co comprehensive income by adding oci in profit by adding oci in profit after tax so see this is this this see this is 7125 this is this 7125 is calculated using profit after tax now add add oci share add oci share of s company i think oci share was 3000 s company in s companies in in s companies soci there was a there was there was an oci there was an oci of 3000 hope you see the question let, wait let me show you the question see see this boys and girls please boys and girls please please little energy is needed there 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 is an oci of 3000 there is an oci of 3000 in s companies books in s companies books okay and this and this oci purely this oci purely purely relates to last nine months okay so no need to apportion it please no need to apportion it wait so see this is three thousand directly 3000 times nci holding percentage is 15 percent times nci holding percentage is 15 percent 3000 times nci holding percentage is 15 percent so let's calculate this number as well see this is 7575 and this is 7125 okay nci using profit and nci using total comprehensive income did you understand did you understand this calculation please reply please reply on the chat box all of you all of you please reply on the chat box did you understand this nci thing did you understand this nci thing please reply Yes, OCI share, I can show you this, see.
now let's let's write those three lines for you let's write those three lines see 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 these are the three lines if you remember so first of all first of all we'll write these three lines for profit see total profit attributable to c look at here we'll write the total profit we'll copy paste the total profit for c what's the total profit what's the total profit this 264249 264249 Two six four two four nine is the total profit. See, I have written here. Two six four two four nine is the total profit I have written. Now, what is the NCI share? What is the NCI share of profit? What's the NCI share of profit? What's the NCI share of profit? It's seven one two five. NCI share is seven one two five. Can you see? Now, now you have to calculate the parent company. Simple, simple. This minus this. C. See this. Now. Let's do the same thing for total comprehensive income. How much is the weight? Wait. What's the total comprehensive income for the whole group? It's two seven seven zero two seven double zero four nine point five. Okay. Right. and what's the nci share what's the nci share of total comprehensive income we have already calculated it we have already we have already calculated it wait this is the this is the nci share of total comprehensive income see okay now let's let's see the share of parent company this minus this okay here you go your 18 marks done 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 did you understood did you understood the ending things please tell me reply on the chat box reply on the chat box did you understand these these ending things please all of you reply now there was one requirement b as well there was one requirement b as well requirement b it's a short requirement and we can do it we can do it and few people are asking one question i'll i'll answer that the question is wait sir why there is a question let me clarify it why associate share of dividend dividends from associate why dividends from associate are not deducted from associate share of profit why because we have to at least record one time as an income that's our income yes we are investors in associate company we are investors in associate company so that dividend is your investment income and at least one time at least one time you have to record it yes at least one time and it is already included in associate share of profit so let it be let it remain let it remain in the associate share of profit because it's your right one time at least you can book but you cannot book it two times you cannot book it two times how it 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 may came may come in your books two times because already parent company parent company has already recorded in investment income 
parent company has already recorded their dividend and investment income individual books and it is also included in associate share of profit now there are two places two places one is investment income parent companies in one one time it is it has been added in parent companies investment income and second time second time it is already included in associate share of profit so these are two times two time so just simply remove one time not two time because at least one time is our right did you understand no we can we can't do either way only we it's must that you have to remove from investment income because it is already included in associate share of this is not a choice please this is ifrs <laughs> this is ifrs it's like a law which you have to follow now now the next requirement see this this is the question this is the question now the last requirement calculate the carrying value see the read the requirement the requirement is in front of you calculate the carrying amount of investment in arch company in the consolidated statement see this requirement relates to balance sheet this requirement relates to balance sheet this requirement relates to balance sheet calculate the carrying amount of the investment in arch company in the consolidated statement of financial position as at 31st december 08 now wait i can't shift my screen to ipad now because it will consume my time but today today i taught you guys today i taught you guys today i taught you guys wait 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 today i taught you guys carrying how to calculate carrying value of investment total page i showed you hope you remember how to calculate carrying value of investment in associate and after the class i'll send the pic i'll send the pic that's my duty i'll send you the pic of that page so what what things come c coi cost of investment first we write coi look at me you will understand coi then post profit share post profit multiply by your holding percentage okay two things third deduct any impairment if any deduct any impairment if any in this question there is no impairment <coughs> in this question there is no impairment of associate in this question there is no impairment of associate so forgot it now the fourth thing oh god please help help these kids now the fourth thing is remove remove or deduct dividends from associate dividends you receive from associate hope you remember and the fifth thing fifth thing is if there is a p to a sale if there is a p to a sale p to a then remove the urp share as well urp urp multiply by your holding percentage share in it also this i taught you this i taught you okay so i repeat first of all you will write coi then you will add post profit multiply by your holding percentage then you deduct then you deduct impairment from associate okay then number 4 number 4 number 4 listen look at here look at here number 4 then you deduct dividends from associate number 5 if is there any p to a sale then you remove the urp thing as well in this question there are everything except for impairment except for impairment except for impairment okay now wait just read the note number 5 i have just i have just stopped at note number 5 just read the note number 5 note number 5 just read the note number 5 note number 5 thing this note see can you see this already the coi just think already the coi at the beginning of the year was 145000 already the carrying value of investment in associate already the carrying value of investment in associate at the beginning of the year is was 145000 now just at the adjust now just adjust this year's number you will get the answer okay so i am moving on my screen now
Yes, one for forty-five thousand is should be taken as COI for your easiness. Let's do it. Let's do it, boys and girls. Please see. This is carrying value of investment in associate at thirty-first December zero seven zero seven was one forty-five thousand. You can assume it as COI. Okay, you can assume it as COI. Now then. share of post profit share of post profit you remember our profit was 92750 our profit in this question was 92750 and you have to multiply it with your holding is 0.35 okay 92750 multiply by 0.35 let me apply the formula as well 92750 times 0.35 Okay. Oh, sorry, I did again nine two five seven zero. It was nine two five. Sorry, 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 my mistake. It was nine two. Wait. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry, ah, huh? let me change. Nine two five seven zero. Not. now less dividend paid less dividend paid there is no impairment in this question so forget it dividend was i think 122 how much 12250 dividends from associate was 12250 minus 12250 and urp adjustment was 2100 urp adjustment p2a let me write here urp adjustment here P two, sorry. P two A. Okay. Now, what should be the carrying value of investment in associate? okay so that's the end that's the end of this question that's the end of this question 163 okay 050 or 049.5 okay done wait 2 minutes wait 2 minutes wait 2 minutes relax relax 2 minutes i'll teach you i'm not going to teach you one more new question that question is not difficult that's easy you can do it yourself i am going to revise one topic that is disposal you know in in our f7 course we have not only we have the buying of running business but also the selling selling of running business so i'll make you revise that disposal topic i'll make you revise the disposal topic don't worry just wait 2 minutes 2 minutes
just wait one minute I'll share the Excel file as well. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Now, the topic is, the topic is disposals. In this F7 course, not only we have in this F7 course, not only please last few 10 minutes, last 10 minutes I'll take in this F7 course, not only we have the buying, the buying, the buying of running business, but also the disposal of running business. Okay. Right. So for example, for example, look at here, I'll, I'll make you revise. For example, you bought, you bought the running business you bought the running business on 1st of january 2016 okay so these are routine things which you already know that on acquisition date you will compute goodwill on acquisition date you will compute goodwill and all you will compute goodwill and all that's routine thing okay you have to do it now for example the case number one case number one in the question in the question it is written that you sold on the very last day you sold the, all the shares. You, you bought the 80% shares. For example, you had 80% holding. You had 80% holding of that company and you sold all the holding one shot on 31st December 2019. The last day, the last, the very last day on the morning, on the morning or very last day of the year end, the reporting date. Okay. Now, just think. When you sell a single asset, for example, you sell a plant, you sell a chair or anything, you, you buy, you compute gain or loss on disposal. So now, so now as you have sold the running business, obviously, obviously you have to compute gain or loss on disposal. Now there are two methods of calculating gain or loss on disposal. Some students do it through statements. Some students do it through statements and some students do it through entry. I'll tell you both things, which whatever you like it, do it. Listen, first of all, see, you will write disposal proceed. Obviously you have sold the running business. You got the money. You sold the running business and you got the money. You got the money. So you have disposal proceed DP and obviously this DP as you had, as you had 80% shares, as you had 80% shares of that company. So that means you sold 80% of the holding so that this disposal proceed is, is equal to 80%. This disposal proceed is equal to 80%. Okay. Now what you will do as you sold the running business, as you sold the running business, that means you sold all the net assets, all the net assets gone. So see, look at me. Less fair value of net assets of S company add see, I have changed the color at disposal date. Fair value of net assets of S company as disposal date. This, this fair value. See this net asset packet. You have to use, you have to use the disposal date net asset packet. Now I repeat for, for disposal gain or loss calculation. You have to use the disposal date net assets packet. Don't forget it. So fair value of net assets of S company at disposal date, this number. And then now think as you sold, just think as you sold the running business, look at here, as you sold the running business, you have sold the goodwill as well. You have so running business are running businesses are always sold with goodwill running businesses are 
always sold with goodwill so you have also sold the goodwill so you have also you have to write goodwill at disposal date okay all the data at disposal date so this thing and this thing we have added this thing and this thing we have added now one great mathematic mathematical issue see this net asset is complete and this goodwill is also complete net asset and goodwill is also complete so they are they, they both are 100 percent they both are 100 percent but look at here this is this is 80 percent this disposal proceed is 80 percent and the net assets and goodwill is total complete so now we need to remove we need to remove nci from this total we need to remove nci from this total read the english please read the english c less less nci c nci at at dash date less nci less nci at disposal date don't forget this this thing okay and when you remove this 20 percent nci see the final number is automatically 80 percent this final number is automatically 80 percent use your brain use your brain if you have some <laughs> if you have some okay now if you get the deduct this from this if you get a positive number it's a gain if you get a negative number it's a loss gain i hope you understood it i hope you understood it now if you want to make it through entry if you want to make it through entry what i listen in my classes i often say my students that that wait now you have to break the building of consolidation because you sold the running business few years back few years back you acquired the running business few years back you acquired you bought the running business and now you sold it you sold it so you now you have to break the building of consolidation so in our class normally i say in my class that building breaking entry consolidation building breaking entry okay how we make it see this this way wait wait you sold the company you got the cash you sold the company you got the cash you got the cash so debit bank debit bank you got the proceed debit bank okay now just think one second before the disposal one second before the disposal this company was attached to us one second before the disposal this company was wa was added with us yes and now we sold it so we said goodbye bye 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 so s companies net assets at disposal date at disposal just simply remove it simply remove it okay again as we sold the running business, we sold the goodwill as well. We sold the goodwill. We said bye bye, bye bye. So goodwill also, goodwill also credit. Now, as we have broken the building, as we have broken the building, so now that's the end of that's the end of NCI as well. No more NCI. No more NCI will be recorded recorded in our books because this is the end of consolidation. This is not the birth of consolidation. This is the death of consolidation okay and you know nci is calculated using equity equity the nature of nci is equity so when you remove nci it will go on the debit side nci debit and now finally let me change the color now finally if you get a balancing number here see if you get a balancing number here it will be gain on disposal see i've changed the color and if you get a balancing number here this will be loss on disposal my dear boys and girls either you get either you get gain or you get loss or not get lost <laughs> or you get loss loss on disposal okay so this is the this is the entry few students few students like few students like entry and few students like statement i personally like double entry for this topic i personally like double entry but whatever you like it you can do it whatever you like it you can do it
Okay, now one golden lines and very important thing. Say, listen, as look at me, look at me, please. Few one few minutes of concentration, please. As on the last day, wait. As on the morning of thirty first December two thousand nineteen, on the morning of thirty first December two thousand nineteen, you sold your running business. So in the evening time, at the end of the year. at the end of the year you don't have you no more you are you don't have any control of this company so now at the year end no more adding together in the balance sheet no more no more assets and liabilities adding together in the balance sheet no more no more adding together in the balance sheet assets and liabilities right no adding together strictly no because you lost the control on the last day you lost the control on the last day morning okay and balance sheet is always as at balance sheet is always as at so you no longer have control with that in that company but one thing which is very very important one thing which is very very important look at here from this date please boys and girls please boys and girls from this date to this date from see this line this date to this date this was your time this was your controlling time you were the owner you were the owner between these time from the acquisition date to disposal date these this that was your time that was your time so listen look listen my words you must you must you must add you must add this 15 see this is this 15000 s companies post retained earning share in consolidated retained earning you must add this 15000 you must add this s companies post retained earning in consolidated reserve okay see i have written here don't forget to add this is the mistake in the examiner report examiner has also written all of you listen i forgot to tell you in the beginning do read all of you please all of you must read the examiner reports of recent attempt last two attempts at least examiner reports in that way you can identify the mistakes done by students don't forget to add s companies post retained earning from acquisition date to disposal date from acquisition date to disposal date in consolidated retained earning okay now i need to teach you one last case one extra case i know you are tired and i am also tired please because i am constantly speaking and in my physical class i use very good quality mics but right now here there is no there are no mics so it is hurting now listen for example for example look at here your acquisition date is 1st january 2016 and this is the data of your acquisition date your acquisition date net asset is 10000 so simply you will be calculating goodwill at acquisition date you will be calculating good goodwill at acquisition date now in the question in the question your reporting date is 31st december 2019 in the question your reporting date is 31st december 2019 please look at here but but the disposal date but the disposal date is 30th june 2019 okay but the disposal date is 30th june 2019 look at here so now by hook or by crook you need to calculate net assets at this date you need to calculate net assets of s company at this disposal date okay so look at here for example examiner see this is written for example examiner has given you the profit after tax of this last year for example examiner has given you the profit after tax the pat the pat of last year is 
for example the pat profit after tax for the last whole year is 10000 is 10000 so what you will do you will apportion it you will apportion this profit see this is the whole year profit see this 10000 is the whole year profit you apportion it with 6 upon 12 so this will be 5000 and this will be 5000 now use your brain you are on the end of f7 please you are on the F end of f7 now this closing retain earning this closing retain earning includes this 5000 this closing retain earning uh, this 5000 profit is already added this 5000 profit is already added in closing retain earning and now you have to go reverse you have to go reverse so 25 minus 5 this date retain earning will be 20000 and share capital is same copy paste so your disposal date sorry your disposal date net assets is 25000 i know this is 30 but this is 25 so this number is very relevant for you your disposal your disposal date net assets your disposal date net assets is 25000 your disposal date net asset is 25,000. This is last year PAT. Last year PAT is given. Last year profit after tax is given. Now, in this question, just two minutes. Sorry, I've taken a lot of time. I'm really sorry. In this question, in this question, this 25,000, this 25,000, this 25,000 will be used will be used in in this gain or loss on disposal working gain or loss on disposal working okay and now can anybody tell me what is the what is the s company's post retain earning in this question to be included what is the s company's post retain earning to be included to be included to be included in consolidated reserve very good very good excellent excellent one student told this s companies post retain earning which post retain earning you have to include from your acquisition date to your disposal date see this is this is 25 minus 10 is 15 okay 25 minus 10 is 15000 this is the s companies post retain earning which you have to include which you have to include in consolidated reserve working okay so now i'm tired i'm tired this throat is not working now so i hope i hope you understood it i hope you understood something our tomorrow's agenda is very very important our tomorrow's agenda is very very important that is ratios the ratio is one of the most technical topic for students ratio analysis is one of the most technical f7 ratio is not easy i always say it openly the only area which is technical which is little difficult in f7 is ratios don't think it's very easy okay so now let's meet tomorrow i'll send you the link i'll send you the link before the class same 5 pm i'll send you the link okay do attend don't miss the class it's it will be useful i've taken i've arrange many points for you okay right take care take care take care bye bye love is